Live from the Toad Hop Network Studios. In Hollywood, this, this is the ToadHopNetwork.com. It is strongly addictive. Radio worth watching. Radio worth watching. I'll tell you what, man. It is that it is that a chaotic thing before the storm. You guys have not experienced this yet. We, we used to have some prep time. Not anymore. You are in this thing, and you are ready to go. It is the Schmoes No Podcast. Christian Harloff here, and oh my God, the gang is back in town. To my right is my buddy, my pal, Mark Ellis. What's Reunited up? United, and it feels so good. We are on a mission from God. The band is back together, ladies it's and gentlemen. It's pretty nuts. And back from her hiatus from the Schmoville land, our buddy, our pal, our our co-host, the lovely, the talented Katie Sackoff is back. Woo! What's up, Katie? I was going to sing something really inappropriate what? because oh, you sang I and sang then reunited, reunited and, it feels so and good. I was going straight to my tits, my ass, my <laughs> dun dun, and my. And and they are, and and Welcome already, back. And already Schmoville is thrilled you are back. So <laughs> it didn't take long for us to get that chemistry back. No, it's 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 actually it is amazing that uh, everyone is back. It's it's look, we had some really good shows while you two knuckleheads were gone, but we uh we You guys did, and can I say that real yeah, quick? And I, I'm I'm sure I speak for Katie too, is that you guys like I, I thought I I'm pretty sure Katie thought this too. We thought the ship was going down. Yeah, I understand. We I did were for, a second. Out yeah. for a month and we come back and you guys have made this thing into like an event. Like you see the fans tweeting and Facebooking about it. Thursday night is Schmo Night in yeah. America. Yeah, and and that is and and I would be uh, I can't take that. I'm turning it off. I'm turning it off. I, I can't. <laughs> that was I can't, me. Sorry. I, oh, okay. I can't take the credit for it uh, because Ken Knapsack, who was if you, you guys are very familiar with him as a guest already, he is he's our hovering uh, over. Me. Well, he, he's he, milking the webcam. Right he's now. our creepy, sweaty producer, but he's a hell of a producer. Aww. I'll tell you that he really is good. He's he's going to lose about ten pounds today because this is it's hot in the studio today, guys. Um, it is hot in here. There's so much to talk about today. I'm I'm so I'm so excited. We're going to talk to Katie about uh, her movie, what she's been up to, uh, the, the stuff that was going on with, with the Expenda Bells, which we're going to talk about. We got to talk. Well, you can't. Wait, oh, no, no, you don't, you don't have, we, That's not my movie. That's not that's yours? That's the other one. Oh. That's the competitor. Oh, oh we're taking well, down the That makes me fucking happy. It down because they hired the, the yeah, they're, no, they're, it's a, they're very different projects. They hired the writers from Legally Blonde. Okay. Like, our writers are like, oh. let's blow some shit up and stab people It all people makes sense. That, I am so excited to hear that news because Here's what I, was mad, I was getting mad at you when I heard of Expend Bells. I'm not wearing pink. Okay. okay Expend okay, Bells okay. sounds like something that Great you would news. see on like, on like Cinemax at 2 a.m. and it's like, oh, expend a bull. No, it's expend a bells. Right. But there's gonna be a lot of boobs in it, so I'll probably watch it. It's but. gonna be boobies. E- yes. Yeah. Okay. That's well. Oh, that's fantastic news. So we'll, we'll talk. Well, I guess we really can't talk about that much. We got we got the answer. I was gonna yell at you about the name of the movie. I thought it's it's a terrible oh, yeah. name. No, no, okay. No. Great. I think ours ours has a really great name. I can't talk about it. Yet. Oh you can't, God, can you that say is so good. About the project yet? But like, it's it's basically a bunch of hot female chicks who are big in Hollywood right now, like the Expendables. Except you guys aren't from the Korean War generation. We're a little yeah. younger. It's not like right. Betty oh, White okay. yeah. and Judith Light and all these people getting yeah. together. No. It's, a, it's a younger generation of yeah. ass kickers. So yeah. what it looks like then is that you guys announced this project and they went, hey, that's a good idea. We should do one too. You pretty much. I think uh, okay. theirs is going to be more like a Charlie's Angels version. Uh, you know, and okay. ours is going to be more like uh, the new Dread. Yeah, I yeah. love that. All right, cool. Okay, yeah. good news. Great news to hear from Katie. And by the way, Katie is wearing uh, our Schmoes No Podcast shirt. Look at that. That 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 picture was done by Robert Sumblin, who uh, is a fan of Schmoes No, and he he does all the cartoon work for for us. I mean, the guy is really really. I think the talented. ties have turned with Sumblin. I think we're fans of him. Now I know it's true. Th- that that kicks ass. Man. That is not the last time you're going to see Robert Sumblin's artwork. No, on this no, he, and no, it's I love not. The fact that you guys' heads are right on my boobs almost. I'm not complaining about that nope. either. They're right under. <laughs> that, They're right under. Works for us. Thank you, Bob. The check is in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, right. men small. Uh, now, my um, how, and how about you, my my favorite simpleton? Uh, how was your road gigs and uh, stuff? The the road's fantastic. I missed you guys though. I know you it's know, crazy. It's it's very it's... lonely. But you know, again, watching this thing, I was watching it from a hotel room, and yep. I was thinking, like, they really have something here now because it's at night. Everybody gets off work. They crack a couple beers. They watch the schmoes for two hours, mm-hmm. and you don't know what's going to happen, especially with that monkey running the ship. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Yeah, so, right. but you guys have done a fantastic Thank job. You. you and Kenny yeah. and Tiffany did great. Tiffany Smith. Tiffany's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tiffany is so, and she's a big fan of yours, by the way, Katie. So, uh, she seems really sweet. She's so lukewarm cool. on me, but I, huge fan of Katie's. Oh. Was was hoping was hoping that Kenny was going to replace <laughs> you, but uh, but she actually she was really great. Shmova loved her. Um, and we and have an intern too, right? We have an intern. He's getting us beer right now. So, uh, and, and thank that, God. Well, that was the thing is that this guy that that's the kind. See, when in the morning you got to call. 
coffee. At night, you get beer. It's a better job because then you get some of the beer. And can I put it on record, Kenny? Can you write this down that the first order that I gave our intern was to go get beer? When we right, sends him in. Yeah. Yeah. And I, ha- I love the fact that I handed him a hundred dollar bill from <laughs> my leftover per diem <laughs> from the movie, he's, and he he's was gone. He's, gone. he's gone, or he's, he's coming, coming back. back with so much beer <laughs> right. that it's going to be interesting. That's true. We didn't really tell him how much to get. No, we were just like, get some shit. <laughs> we don't even know if the guy's twenty one. He could be having a Teen Wolf <laughs> experience. That's- I said. A keg of beer. <laughs> He's tapping somebody's shoulder right now, going, That's what I was told shoulder tapping was. I don't understand. All right, hey, mister, will you buy us beer? Just like before, let's try to get it back, back, rain and all in. Just like uh, it's not, nothing's changed. So yeah. here, here's how it works, guys. If you're new to listening to the podcast, you tweet in at Schmoes No, 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 at Schmoes No, or at Katie Sackoff. I'm going to ask some questions. We got a really cool show today. Um, we're going to, I still want to hear about more about Katie's movie that she just shot. But uh, um, today's episode is all going to be about remakes, reboots, and how cool is this? The second half of the, uh, well, the, after our first break, we're going to be taking a phone call from a really great director in Craig Brewer. Speaking uh, of beer, Craig Brewer calling in. That is fantastic. He's the guy that did Hustle and Flow, yep. and he did the Footloose remake, and which we both ended up loving. I love the Footloose flea, uh, remake. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what, and Black Snake Moan. And here's yeah. the thing with this guy, is the fact that like, I really respect like celebrities and, and directors and actors and stuff who, who tweet out to the fans, who uh-huh. acknowledge the fans. During Footloose, when it was going out, this guy was tweeting everyone. And that's how, because he, he, even, if, even if they shit on his movie, he's like, don't just shit on it before you even see it. If you see it and don't like it, then that's fine. Yeah. But check it out because I put a lot of work into it. And, and I saw what he was doing and I tweeted him and I tweeted him our review and I was back and forth with him and then he became a fan after our, because he also produced a Katy Perry movie. Right, yeah, which I love too, by the way. And I still have the, the Katy Perry 3D heart-shaped sunglasses in the back of my car. Love it. Oh, just so funny. Yeah. Well, that's, For whatever so, reason. And so he, that's how we got in touch, was back and forth on Twitter mm-hmm. and he, he turns out he's a fan of the show. He asked, he said, when am I coming on the show? And, and that's what Sean Aston said. And I said, tomorrow, whenever you want to go on the show. So, um, I spoke to him. He's going to call in from Memphis, second uh, part of the show. He's also going to be with us from around 8.30 to 10, and we're going to talk about all remakes and reboots and find out what he's doing now, and I'm, uh, I'm really excited to talk to the guy. Super nice guy, but uh, Katie, yeah, let us talk about Ugh. your first horror film. Yay. Well, I mean, Oculus, right? second. Oh, right, right, Possibly right. right. White Noise, I guess that's right. It's, yeah, White Noise 2 and Halloween oh, Resurrection, right. but that's okay. It's White Noise oh, 2, right. which okay. currently has an 89% rating on <laughs> Rotten oh, Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. Where'd you get that from? Oh, that's yeah. right. So, uh, oh yeah, there you go. So we had, um, all right. So we were talking about before you left. Yeah, your possible co-stars being Jamie Lannister. Can you say that? Can is that? No, it wasn't. It, was it not. ended up okay. being Rory Cochran. Okay, from Dazed and Confused. Right, right, oh, right, right. Who was he? And, in Dazed and Confused? he's in Argo. He's in Argo. Yeah, who, sure is in Argo. Who was he in Dazed? The Stoner. Dazed? He was the Stoner. <laughs> Come on, dude. The Stoner, Stoner. Yeah, yeah the man, guy, George, George Washington. Washington. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can tell what Christian I watched in college. Yeah, and he yeah. was in Argo. Oh, cool. Yeah, All he's right. One of, he's one of the guys that was caught. And um, a really, really cool guy. Had a lot of fun with him, and, and it's and it's pretty scary. You filmed a horror, and you know I love horror movies, so yeah. I'm very, very excited, especially this time of year. This is my time of year for horror films. Now, you when, when does the movie come out, first of all? Do we know? I don't know, but um, Circle of Confusion um, really loves the movie, and I think that... Um, wait, not Circle of Confusion. Oh, Sorry, I, Film District. Um, I thought Cir- next movie. I thought Circle of Confusion was the name of the film. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, it's called Oculus, and, and they... they like Oculus. the daily so much that I think they're they I've heard they're moving it up but you know in this business nothing means anything until it's actually on the screen so cool cool all right okay cool I mean it's so you had a fun time shooting it I had a great time shooting it I've never the the first week I was so covered in bruises and then the second week I was so tired from crying all the time that right. I was like physically abused then emotionally abused well, because of stuff happening on camera do you just have your own stuff going on in Mobile Alabama. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I lost my shit in Mobile, that's right. Alabama. That's a song. It's you, a country song. I'm sure it is. You wouldn't be the first one. No, not at all. Um, okay, so can you what what can you tell us? Can you tell us about uh, the the plot at all, or as far as the what's the talking about? Um, yeah, and, Oculus is um, without giving too much away because it's amazing. You have it um, something to do with eyes. It's it's all about um, without giving too much away. God, right. it's about uh, crimes that were committed by a family. Or by members of a family the um, that seem to be exactly <laughs> that seem to be possessed by a mirror in their house. 
And that's, uh, and that's all you can say. Oh, so this is one of those things like you look in a mi- and I'm just guessing. Katie hasn't told me any of this because we don't talk as much as you guys think off the podcast. <laughs> right. Uh, so like you look in a mirror, right? And then once you look in that mirror, you're never quite the same way again because the mirror mm. has effects on you. Wow. Yeah, maybe. That maybe. Be, I mean, that's and, right. and when does said film come out? Um, I, I I would say probably before October okay. next year, maybe October. I don't know. You know, there's nothing set in stone, but supposedly they've seen the the dailies and they're they're, uh, they're contemplating moving it up because they love it so much. So. Okay. They're Oculus like and, Oculus. Oh. Woo! Thank you. Uh, Welcome uh, back, Mark Ellis. You sound uh, amazing. So, You're so good. Well, before we have uh, our, our uh, there's a new segment that you guys don't know about as well. You really? you know actually because I think you were watching, but uh, nice acting. Um, I was I was also <laughs> really Christian. <laughs> tell me about. Tell me me. So uh, before I, before I get into this new segment, when before you left, we were talking about Mobile, Alabama. Oh, Mobile, Alabama. How mm-hmm. was it? How was Mobile? Um, Mobile. We were actually in a place called uh, Daphne, Alabama, okay. mm-hmm. um, right next to Fairhope, Alabama. Fairhope and, and Daphne were great. Mm-hmm. Um, it was fantastic. The people were so amazing. Yeah. I had a great time. Everyone at the hotel where we were staying at were phenomenal, and and they really went out of their way to you know make us comfortable, and and it, we just had a great time. The crew was amazing, and you know. A really great experience. Yeah, see, anytime you go to the South, everybody's really nice. You have that Southern hospitality thing. But again, in any town in the South, because I'm from there, you have those one or two creeps that right. wear like sleeveless flannel yeah. shirts and they walk around with chainsaws and, and a gator on anybody. Yeah. I always yeah. say that they yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, you, and then stab you in the back. That's right. Or, or feed you to alligators. <laughs> They're going to be That's nice to your face. Um, That's right. All right. I'm so happy to have you guys back. I will say that. And I haven't even had a beer yet. It's it's really nice to have the crew I know. back. This guy is taking way too I mean, it's it's been 10 minutes. He's I know. Probably unbelievable. getting arrested. <laughs> Uh, oh, he probably is getting arrested well, the, right now. But Schmoville did like Josh the intern, so uh, he, he's he's back. Josh hey, the intern, we he, have a and he had a great three week run. Joined by, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we, had, we had Jeff, our our engineer, is kicking ass as always, and now our segment by our producer. This is the new segment with Ken Bunny Napsack. Yay, Bunny! Thank you, thank you very much. Is uh, we on? We on? We live, yeah, Jeff. We're good. All right, I'm Ken Napsack, and these are your schmoes. No headlines. I can't even say my own name. Welcome back, everyone. The world stopped on Tuesday when the first Iron Man three trailer became available for mass consumption. The two minute clip sets a dark tone in which Iron Man is dealing with depression. And sleepless nights and shawarma heartburn. You uh, also get a glimpse of Ben Kingsley far removed from his peaceful Gandhi days as the Mandarin. The buzz around the trailer is generally positive, though comic shops everywhere are filled with fierce debates over whether the foot belonged to the Hulk, how hot is Guy Pierce, and is Iron Patriot actually War Machine, or are they both just holding the line for Detroit still? Got all that good. The movie comes out <laughs> April 2013. April 2013. Yeah. Breaking today, director Matthew Vaughn is no, opted out of helming X Men Days of Future Past. But Brian Singer, the man who helped launch the successful X-Men film franchise to begin with, has been tapped as his replacement. Singer wrote the treatment for the Vaughn-directed X-Men First Class, while Vaughn wrote the treatment for the soon-to-be Singer-directed X-Men Days of Future Past. And afterwards, everyone put their keys in a bowl, (laughs) grabbed a wife, and went home morally conflicted. Scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And just in case you haven't tired of superheroes saving people and things in group form, Warner Brothers has announced that all systems are go for the much-rumored Justice League movie. Filming will take place next year with an eye on a 2000. 2015 release, but here's something to get your Wonder Woman underoos in a bunch. Rumors are the film will not be tied into Christopher Nolan's Batman universe and possibly not even Zack Snyder's forthcoming Man of Steel. Oh, yes. No, no cast or director no. attached yet, but one can only hope Michael Bay is too busy. <laughs> Put down your controller, gamers. Assassin's Creed will be heading to the big screen. Ubisoft right. and New Regency will be co-producing the film adaption of your roommate's favorite video game. Fox will distribute. The popular game series is about a long line of cool assassins battling the Knights Templar from generation to generation. Michael Fassbender has signed on to ah. don the cloak that conceals the assassins' and. most dangerous <laughs> weapons, except, of course, for Fassbender's own personal pants weapon, which cannot be hidden and is still illegal in 42 states. Big cock on that boy. Casting news. <laughs> Hello, penis. Details are still uncertain, but Stephen Colbert is set for a small cameo in Peter Jackson's second or third installment of the forthcoming Hobbit trilogy, what? and that is not a clerical error. No. Sam Raimi I, I has that. already been attached Stephen as the producer of the Poltergeist Hobbit. remake, but now reports Peg Raimi as the director. They're here for my boomstick. And so is the beer. The beer yeah. has arrived. And Woo! finally, we here at Schmoes know wish to take a moment to mark the passing of actor and American Indian activist Russell Means, who 
passed away this week. Means is perhaps best known for his role as Chin Gutch Gook, the literal last of the Mohicans in Michael Mann's oh, 1992 man. film, The Last of the Mohicans. He was huh. 72. I'm Ken Napsuck, and those are your Schmoes No Headlines. Oh, yeah. Ken yeah. Bunny. Now, he, he left out the one story I, I hoped he would do Breaking. it. Oh, breaking, breaking news. news. Oh, okay, breaking news. Caught off the presses, meaning Christian emailed me as I was leaving my house. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger is set to star in the new Conan the Barbarian movie 30 years after the original. It's not what? expected. That is going to take a King, lot of steroids. Yeah. King Conan. <laughs> King not Conan. expected to be tied into the cheesy sequel Conan the Destroyer or the ill-fated Conan reboot with uh, Cal Drago from Game of Thrones. I liked it. No, you didn't. Li- did. No, who li- you're the only person that liked that. Are you kidding the me? The only reason I liked it, it entertained me. I didn't fast forward through the damn thing. Wait I'll tell minute. you Wait exactly. Christian, Come I know on. I know you're going to get upset Come about on. this. I'll tell you why Katie Sackhoff loved it. You know why? Why? Because Katie Sackhoff does three things well. She loves, she eats, she slays. She is content <laughs> oh, to watch a- the remake of God. It was not That good. was how bad the, the, the writing was. Yeah. I don't even care. Uh, right. He was, he was he, hot. Jason but Momoa, not bad to look at. But the movie, the movie, not him running around with his pecs. And I like Rose McGowan. I like she and I met she, a couple weeks ago, and I no, like being, I like her as a person. You're being politically much. nice. Yeah, uh, um, you're being politically nice. I, you, you know what I love about that segment, Christian, is what? how quickly oh, Kenny reads past all the stories, so that even if we get upset about like the Justice League, well, he's already us. on to the next story. Yeah. He should be a doctor like delivering news. Uh, she's going to die in about five minutes. We also have Chick Fil A in the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs a rectal exam? <laughs> uh, now, speaking of rectal exams, let's talk about this Justice League thing. Um, exams. Now, I, I, let's cheers. Let's cheers. Let's cheers. Let's Everybody cheers. back. And Mark Welcome Ellis' back. first Woo! beer on Woo! the podcast. Josh, the intern, get over here. Thank you, Josh. Get in on the toast. Josh, come on. Josh, the intern. It. There we go. Whee! He's the schmo turn. Um, okay. <laughs> we'll work on that. We'll work on it. We'll We're work on the name. Did you send the clip, by the way, Tim? The, um, the other one? No. Uh, it's it, it, it's going to be ready okay. next week, so right, we got fine, excited. Fine, fine, Okay. So, uh, Justice League. Here's it. Now, I, tweet, I put this on Facebook, and I tweeted it, and, and we mentioned it in the news. My biggest problem with this movie, and we talked about this a hundred times already on, on the show, but it's it's too rushed. And if you're not going to, if, if you're going to reintroduce me, uh, speaking of reboots and stuff, you're going to reintroduce me to Superman, mm-hmm. okay? Put him in the Justice League movie. You can't give me a new Superman. I have two different Supermans, and then there's no tie-in whatsoever to any of the Batman franchise at all. Wait, they're not using the new no, Superman saying, in the Justin League? No, they're going to a totally different one. That's what they're saying, yeah. They're, it's no, there's no point. That's, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's, what that's they're ridiculous. Saying. You yes. know what they may be doing, though? They may be hedging their bets in case this Man of Steel thing turns out to be like Superman Returns and people don't really gravitate towards the new Superman. They may be giving themselves an out. I think there's still going to be a good chance that Henry Cavill is Superman in the new Justice League. My big problem with this, though, is that you look at how carefully pieced together the Avengers was from when Iron Man came out to yep. now. This movie feels more and more to me like the XFL to uh-huh. Marvel's yeah. the NFL, uh-huh. one thousand percent. Yeah, it's, it, what bother, it's the same thing that bothers me is that you know the 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 Avengers was perfectly planned. Every other every movie mm-hmm. of one of those people's minus they didn't do the Black Widow, but every one of those people's movies were successful, mm-hmm. and then they yeah. put them together. Like, yeah. so it, what, it, just, what, I don't know. I agree. I, it's it's uh, it's a trap. It's almost All like right, the let's... Green Lantern failed, and they're like, okay, we're not we're, we're not letting any of these guys fly on their own anymore. Let's just throw them right? all into a movie, have it come out direct yeah, to and VHS, it, and see what happens. It's just it's that whole thing. The fact that like when the, when Avengers because the Justice League was the first, it came out first as a comic. Yeah, and then to challenge them, then Marvel came out with with the Avengers, and now it's reversed. Yeah, and now and and but it but it's like a rush. It's like take your time, dude. It's almost a Star Trek Star Wars thing because Star Trek the TV show was on before Star Wars. Then the movie Star Wars came out. Then Star Trek was like, oh, we got to capitalize yeah. on the yeah. we're going to see this. I'm still. I will say this. I'm still yeah. excited though because anytime a dude puts on a Batman outfit, I'm gonna get <laughs> like, excited. Good. Go down to Hollywood Boulevard. Like a There's tons of them down on. there. <laughs> There's tons of guys running around on Hollywood Boulevard asking for change they, dressed as Batman. They just heckled our intern for some That's of his true. booze. Um, um, okay. Okay, uh, I have to take this shirt off because it's getting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Like yourselves, I have a tank top underneath. Because oh, um, it's, it's, really it's getting it's, hot. It's getting hot in here. It's getting hot in here. So take off all your clothes. But all I right. wanted to say how amazing it is. Uh-huh. You know? Let it be known, Katie has three ounces of beer in her. She's already taken her. No one is listening off. to what we're saying right now. No <laughs> one's listening. No <laughs> one is listening to what we're saying. Everyone's uh, watching. Okay. Christian, I bench pressed 300 pounds today. Did I tell you that? Uh, yeah, nobody, nobody cares. Heard uh, no one cares. Nobody okay, cares. so uh, now here's the other thing that Ken, uh, Ken had mentioned in the news, and that would be the, um, the Hulk and – oh, no, no, excuse me. Brian Singer taking over now. Mm-hmm. X-Men first class. <laughs> yeah, you talk about the Avengers and, and the Justice League, how they kind of spawned each other. Now we have, Brian Singer directed the first X-Men movie when it came out in, what, 2000, 99, 2001? And apparently Matthew Vaughn helped create that story? 
What happened in the original? Uh, what in the original Avengers? You're saying? In, no, in X Men. We're in, talking in about X Men. Yeah. Uh, that I, that I'm not sure. I just know that the the first class. Yeah. What happened was Brian Singer, who was involved in all the X Men movies, came on as a producer, uh-huh. and then had helped write the treatment. And now the roles are reversed. Okay, that, yeah, that's what happened. The yeah. X-Men first class, Brian Singer, Kate was involved in some capacity, but Vaughn directed it. And so now Vaughn is stepping away from he's directing. Produ- he's producing, and, I, and, I, and from an unnamed source, it's confirmed that that's, that's what's happening. So he's, he's going to be, he's gonna be uh, sitting in the back, yeah. and he's going to be producing, and he's going to be writing. So does it make much of a difference, considering you have Brian Singer, who's part of the damn, the, the start of it all, you know, minus the Brett Ratner shit piece? He'd be the best guy to go to. If you got a guy on the bench that has to come in and relieve the starting quarterback, that's the dude you want. He's right. been there before. He knows how to deal with the studio. Remind me to ask Brewer about this, though. Because yeah. is directing such a hard job where you got to fight the studio constantly, where you're oh, like, sure. look, I believe, I believe in this project, but I'm just getting so much shit from the studio on the first movie, I'm just going to step back and produce this I think it depends on. I think it depends on what you've done. Yeah, I think so too, and I think it depends on, on how much control you had over the script to begin with. Right. And you know, if you're a writer and a producer and the director, you're going to be able to do anything. Right. Yeah. But there is a lot of like, you know, you do have to to hand feed the studio a little bit. You do have to like, you know, right. do what they want you to do. I mean, you can't go in and do whatever you want. But doesn't making a successful X Men movie like First Class was allow you to say, "Hey guys, remember when I did he's, good?" But he's but that, he didn't get kicked off. He's doing another project. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, what's no, no. the other project? Is he doing Planet of the Apes? They're saying he's doing another. Uh, they're saying he's doing another um, movie. That it's, I think it's another Marvel movie. Um, mm. Or another com- right. another comic movie, excuse right. me, not Marvel, but comic. Just stay in the world, dude, because your movie, because your, your vision he's a is kick really ass. good. Come on, you kick ass. Okay, so yeah, before awesome. before I tell Katie what the tweet of celebrity segment is, um, <laughs> so he, here's what uh, re- real quick as far as Iron Man three, we'll we'll talk about it a little bit after the break. Then we're going to have Craig Brewer call in. Um, so Iron Man three the trailer, uh, we if you want to watch, look at our review up on our YouTube page. It's youtubecom slash No, um, the Iron Man trailer one review. I really loved it. Mark thinks that there's, it looks cool, but there's still some problems. You don't, you don't, you don't want to see Iron Man just get his ass kicked the whole time. Yeah, I'm just worried about the story. I don't want to yeah. see Iron Man get the crap beat on right after we had this huge victory with the Avengers, and then he's just he's getting his house blown up, right. and Thor is taking a nap. Yeah. Are they, that's what the movie has to do a great job of explaining. Right. What I am happy to say, though, is that the trailer didn't give away too much. That's my big pet right. peeve with trailers is they it show did. you too no, much. No, it didn't. This Not one, with the Avengers trailer when they showed Hulk catch the yeah, fucker. Yeah, yeah. All right, so. The fucker yeah. named Iron Man? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, so, Katie, here, here's what here's what Tweet of Celebrity is. Do we have it? That was done by Awkward Tunity. Awkward Tunity. Oh, she's great. She's great. Yeah. So he, here's how this works. Every week, the last two weeks, what we do, we pick a celebrity, we write it down. We pick one, and we'd like to have someone to have under six or six hundred subscri- oh, subscribers, under. followers, under. Because we we did has- Joseph Gordon Levitt the first time, and then we did some Milano, and they're in the millions at this point. Yeah. So and we then want it to be attainable. Then Schmoville, we tell Schmoville after we pick, and then Schmoville tweets them to tell them to come on the show. And they have been schmovilling it up. And that's what okay. we're going to do again. Okay. And it worked, okay. it worked okay. with Craig Brewer, just myself and him. So with the power of Schmoville and the way it works is Schmoville will, t- once we pick a celebrity, Schmoville will tweet them. Re- and you guys just keep retweeting it. And eventually we'll fish in somebody. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so you've been away. But you're, you want less than 500. That's like, well, that's I mean, like. Not le- not like just try to ballpark it. Just don't, don't tweet like Justin <laughs> Excuse Bieber. Excuse me. How many do you have? Eighty-five thousand. <laughs> so what are you talking about? <laughs> if, if we didn't know you, we'd try to fish you in. What are you talking about? Yeah, you might. She might be at the top of that list. <laughs> yeah, try me like Alicia like, Cuthbert. He- What's she doing? I don't know what she's That's doing. What I'm oh, she's about. on a TV show. It's called. Uh, it's the the. Thing. Oh yeah, it's called uh, Happy Endings. Happy Endings. Of course, I know that. Uh, all right, creepy. So, uh, uh, creepy. All right, let's take. Can we take one call from Schmoville? Because we're not really going to get too many. Can I? I can't. Look at you. Stop. Okay, mean, I got. I got one. Can I put someone down that I'm friends with so it's easier to get them? Absolutely. Totally. Yeah. yeah. That, um, yes. I don't even have a card. Well, we're not going to do that. We're coming back. We're oh, coming back okay. to do it. Let's, I'm taking a call. Oh, we're not doing quick. it right now. Uh, all right, because we got two minutes. We got two minutes. You can cut them off. Hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Uh, hello? Hey, man. Who do you, who do we got? Aaron. This is Aaron. Hey, Aaron. What's up, man? What do you want to ask? Uh, I don't know. What, what were you guys just talking about? Uh, all right. Um, okay, so just call us back. Yeah, and, just, just uh, have a topic, we'll guys. Discuss. We'll just call in and, and shit the bed when you call in. Christian uh, checks and balances. You don't override the producer, man. 
Well, See, that's what happened. Right there. He's producer's right there. Engin- engineer is kicking my ass. We've been fighting the last two weeks. You haven't been here. He's, he's been. You've been a bastard. You've been a bastard, Man. haven't you? You've been a bastard. He's been, there been is re- trouble on the bridge of the Enterprise, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have to take this ship over. Good. We might. Yeah, we might have to. All right. All right so that, he's we cutting me out. the next See, generation. I notice he's playing the music over you guys. <laughs> wow. All right. We'll be back in a second. We're going to have Craig Brewer calling in very soon. Uh, Shmova, the, li- the phone line's going to be tied up for about an hour or so because we have Craig uh, calling in. Very excited. Talking reboots, remakes. Stay tuned, Mother F's. What's that? Is that Popeye? No. Oh, it's, it's, it's Nightmare, 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 Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, great. And there was a great Rip shirt, by the way, that just had... Um, a Nightmare Before Christmas? Yeah, Nightmare Before Christmas. And shit, what was the, what was the mix with it? Oh, and Freddy Krueger. Oh, it was great. How did and I? Because you, because you fall asleep on everything. I was in you do. Kansas City, and they don't have the internet there. We're yeah. wearing our ripped apparel shirts, and I'm right. wearing my Hill Valley High School Bulldog shirt from wearing, Back to the Future, and I'm wearing my Walking Dead Rick Grimes shirt. Rick Grimes for president. So the reason we're talking about ripped apparel, they, if you go to our video right there, underneath, and you look at the ripped label, and it'll show you the shirt of the day. Go ahead and click on that. Look at the T-shirt of the day, and you can put in in the code. You type in Schmoes, and you get a dollar off the shirt. They're awesome shirts. We talk about them every week. We love the shirts. They're um, only ten bucks anyway, so get it for nine. So you practically good. should be going to jail. They're really, really good, and you should White check them out. Person. We're gonna get Katie one of them too, so Santa she can Monica wear them too. Um, okay, guys. So we, uh, so Schmoes, I gotta ask you for for this segment here. Don't call in right now because uh, Craig Brewer is gonna be calling in very soon. And we're gonna be talking to him, and um, we want you guys to. There's a lot of aspiring aspiring directors out there mm-hmm. that listen to the show and this is a guy you want to talk you want to hear talk and you know especially the fact that look and we'll talk to him about this as well majority of people and i I was a big footloose fan so when i heard that movie was being remade i was like oh fuck but then but then i heard he was doing it and i was a big fan of hustle and flow yeah and i said all right i'll check it out and i enjoyed it a lot i want to pick up some dance moves from the guy (laughs) look he's a white dude in memphis he's got to be able to teach me something i'm telling you and he probably yeah i mean all his movies he's got you can tell the guy's got some soul yeah, um, you should. You should. I, I can't wait to bring up to Craig Brewer just how big of a fan Christian was of the first Footloose because all this stuff kind of yeah. came pouring out of him after we saw the screening. It was pretty intense. Really? Yeah, yeah. I love. I love the first one. Yeah. I did too. I was a massive fan. Yeah, you're, and, well, you're and a girl. So let's 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 hold that because uh, um, it, it's. I'm, we're gonna wait for wait for Craig to call in. Yeah. And uh, okay, so before before we do that, we covered the Iron Man three trailer, right? Right. Yes. I think this. Is, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Nobody. <laughs> Perfect. It's that's a good. That, that's a good director. Very relaxed. Yeah. Good, yeah. <laughs> Very different. Sometimes you don't even know he's there. It's no, he's not even there. Uh, yeah. Well, if you we just don't, direct yourself, yeah, I, want to, I want to know his directing style too. Is he really like hands on, or is he like Eastwood, where he's like, all right, this we're gonna do this once. Do whatever the hell you want to do. Right. I'll make it good. We yeah. gotta move on. I'll we, fix it in post. Don't that's worry. right. All right. So why, if we have time, then should we should we pick our should we pick our all right, let's can we play the song? This is the long version. No, we don't have the long version. Jeff, the engineer. This is Katie and I are just learning about all these new segments. I, I, I know this. We is... had the news thing, which was pretty <laughs> you hear, cool. Do you I'm hear so Jeff? confused. You, oh, hold on. We got. I, I think we have. No, it's nine oh one. Is nine? No. We live in a world Twitter account. It's time to tweet a celebrity. Awkward, dude. Uh, hold, hold on one second. That's a little. Hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Uh, this is Gabriel. Oh, Eric Gabriel. I got. I got to let you go. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I got to let everybody go. And don't call in right now. Just, I'm, I'm waiting for. It was nine oh three, and I'm waiting for another a, number. Kind of a dick tease right now. Right now I am. Well, we're waiting. Okay, so listen. <laughs> so here's how it's going to work. We're going to do the tweet of celebrity. I have the choices in my hand. Josh, uh, Josh the intern's going to come in, and I'm going to put the the names in his hat. Can you? And then. I'm going to pick one out, and Schmoville. You're going to touch something that was on the inside of that hat? Yeah, it's a New England. All right, oh, so boy. here we go. I'm going to pick one out, and, and then you guys out in Schmoville, you tweet this person and say, you right. really need to come on the Schmoes podcast. I hope I picked a good one. Who do we got? You guys are going to be tweeting Olivia Munn. Olivia yeah. Munn. <laughs> you stuffed the ballot. I didn't stuff it. I'm telling you. I, you Josh, did I cheat? Olivia Munn. I cry hanging Chad foul. I, I did not cheat. I, I, I'm telling you I did not. Guys, make sure you tweet Olivia Munn. But that being said, we're done with Tweet of Celebrity because joining us right now is the director himself, our uh, oh, soon-to-be buddy, because I want to hear everything he's going to talk about, Craig, so. Craig Brewer. How are you, Craig? I'm good. What's up, guys? What's up, man? Uh, so I, I don't know if you've been listening to our silly banter, but we are all very excited to uh, have you on the show. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, it's, I'm, I'm talking to you from Memphis, Tennessee, across the Mississippi. Yeah, now, uh, Craig, I had a question about that. It's it's what? Is it midnight in Memphis? Is it 11, 10? How, are you up past your bedtime, my friend? It's about 1030. You know, I got my bourbon right here, so, you know, this is like the right time. Uh, Perfect. Good. Well, we're one beer deep each, so I hope you can equal <laughs> that level. I've been drinking since 1030 this morning, though, so don't worry about it. Katie doesn't even, I'm not even going to remember this phone call, so. Um, okay, so. <laughs> So, Craig, so here... I wish, I wish I was there, though. Damn, I really wish I was there. Well, ne- next time, when, you, when are you back in Los Angeles? Uh, I'm going to be there in another, probably about another month. I'm oh. kind of finishing up some things out here and uh, trying to remind my kids I'm their dad and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I, I gotta get, Why get would you ever do that? Yeah, I think, Craig, I speak for everybody when I say that's secondary to being in studio with us drinking beer. I have an inflated bed in my studio apartment. You can crash <laughs> on it. Uh, Christian, let's start, let's start grilling this guy. I will, I will, but because I, I want to, Craig, please, when you are in Los Angeles, just visit us in studio because we'd love to have you. Yeah. Um, okay, so all right, so here, here's this the second half. After we talk to you a little bit, we're going to talk about reboots and remakes, and we thought that it would be perfect to talk to you for obvious reasons. And but uh, what what we were talking about right before you got on the phone was, and I'm sure you've heard this a billion times. Um, when I, I'm a huge uh, original Footloose fan, so when I heard it was being remade before I knew you were involved, I went, "That's stupid." <laughs> I was like, "There's no reason that should be made." There's no, and then I heard you were involved, and I'm a huge Hustle and Flow fan, and I went. Oh, all right, I'll give it a shot. And I saw the movie, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And you know that. You saw our review. But uh, it just it just proves that with that much, you know, love for it. Hutzpah. Yeah. That's, so what made, you, what made you want to get involved with Footloose in the first place? Well, I, I got to be honest. I was a little bit like you. I, I heard about it, and I and I thought it was I thought it was stupid. Um, <laughs> but I guess the more I started, I started kind of like getting into it, and I started hearing about, um, you know, that they wanted to redo it. I felt a certain protectiveness, I guess, like any fan does, right. and I, 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 you know, just because I, I you know, I had made two films at Paramount, and I, when I talked to them about it, I was like, you know, when you do this. You know, please. You know, you, you you've really got to you got to do it right by by the fans. You got to be you you've got to give them the kind of movie that is not going to feel like you're insulting them a, a, a little bit because it actually, as much as people you know dog on Footloose, even fans kind of dog on Footloose. It's like, you know, there's some movies that are just there's some movies that are bad that you love or like you loved them when you were younger and right. you look back on them and you're like, yeesh. Pretty much you know, anything Kevin Bacon was in in the '80s. <laughs> right, right, yeah, and that's where I'm, I mean, the 80s is like, I mean, that that's when, I was 13 in 84 when Footloose came out, but it was also the same year that, you know, Purple Rain came out, so it was like a real, it was a special time for me and my growth, because everything, like I was falling in love with movies at the same time, like, you, you know, VCRs, you know, were, were, were beginning to be in every home, and you can go to, like, video stores, and it was just a real, you know, my, my, Dad was going through a renaissance of watching movies, and Phyllis was that thing that me and my dad, and, you know, we both dug. You know, we you played the soundtrack constantly. It was always on TV, and I totally would dance around to that Angry Man song, you know, all by myself, you know. I love that you admit that. I love that. I love that Craig admits, like, usually fathers and sons bond over baseball, but him and his dad are watching Footloose. I love that. My dad took me Footloose, too, and that's the funny thing, though. So, yeah. yeah, but no, and, and, and here's what's funny, because uh, aren't you, like, a New York fan? What, what are you a fan of, uh, Christian? What, what, I'm a, I'm a New, York Gi- that, New York Giants fan. Okay. Yeah, I um, my, my granddad was actually a famous uh, baseball player back in the day for the for the Yankees and then the Mets, and then later he became famous with these beer commercials. Yeah, like no, beer. I saw I saw it on your YouTube and, page. Uh, yeah, and, and and so like all my life, I've I've tried to do the sports thing, and it and it's really just been terrible. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm just recently I've been you know I got a son, and I've been thinking about that a lot. It's like man, I really suck at sports and. <laughs> And uh, movies was my thing, but now my son, like, he'll come in and, you know, he's like 11, and he'll be like, okay, I really want to have a serious talk about who would win between, you know, the Hulk and Thor, like, if that fight just went really to the death. And I thought, like, okay, well, this is kind of like continuing that thing. So, yeah, me and Dad, we bonded over movies, like, even the Blues Brothers, and I mean, probably like when my father isn't with me anymore, you know, he died when he turned 49, you know, this heart attack that really came out of nowhere. And, he and I, we would watch movies, and, and one of my best memories was watching the Blues Brothers with him. 
And it's that. Have y'all seen the Blues Brothers? Of course. Oh, that was a big okay. bonding one for me and my dad, too. It's like he would show that to you. Then you instantly kind of got your dad's sense of humor. And I'm like, that's a pretty good one to have. Yeah. I know. And the, the moment where the nun is just like, you know, just wailing on Jake and Elwood <laughs> yeah. with, their, with the stick. And he falls backwards down the stairs. I just had this memory of my dad just falling out, just like laughing and laughing, just gut laughing. So we felt movies very passionately. And so when, when Footloose came up, I was like, you guys don't understand like how passionate I am about Footloose. And even the people at Paramount, they were like, well, why? Because we heard this. Because <laughs> I, you know, like, I, I would go on like, you know, press tours with with Hustle and Black Snake and they talk about music movies and I and I had this certain fondness for the eighties because there were these music movies that you associated music with and yet nobody really sang, like The Breakfast Club. You know, right. and I and I haven't really there hasn't been any movies recently that I could think of that were kind of like Footloose for like 12 and 13 year olds because it was just daring enough. I, I was telling them, I was like, well, you know, it's about this, you know, girl who's wounded from death in her family and her, and her parents are like, you know, putting these like religious shackles on her and this guy comes into town and he's lost his, his you know, his, he's estranged with his father and, you know, it's, it, to some extent, it's like the themes that I've always just been attracted to. And, and I guess when they started hearing me talking passionately about that element of it and not just the tight jeans and the big hair, right. um, they got they, they were seeing my point of view. And, and even worse, I was like, well, wait a minute, then maybe I should probably I should protect this baby. Yeah. And I mean, that's what that, that's what you worry about when you're going into something like that. And I think yep. fans have that have that kind of relief when they hear whether it's, you know, an adaptation from a comic book or remaking a movie is that the guy behind it is really a fan of the original one. So as soon as the movie comes on, Craig, you hear that that Kenny Loggins thing and it's kind of jazzed up and it's more modern. and You're like, OK, this I, I'm in good hands now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny. Kenny Loggins came up to you. He's like, I'm so happy that you opened the movie with my song, but did you have to kill the kids? <laughs> <laughs> my version. He's like, I knew where you were going. Like, I saw them get in the car, and it's like, I even knew, like, right when I kind of crescendoed in the bridge, right before the, the, the last verse, that you were going to kill those kids. And I was like, I'm sorry, but, you know, you made this iconic song, you know? It's hey, look, if anybody is them. used to somebody on a highway to a danger zone, it is Kenny Loggins. Am I right? <laughs> Exactly. Well, it, well, that was so that you know that that was when it opened up, and I knew we were in for a good movie because you never got that before, and you never you you heard about it, you didn't know, but you knew that Ariel's brother was go, was going down. But this time you got to see it, and I liked that you that showed to the audience that you were a fan and that you cared about the movie, and and what also was the what you kept the original music. And I had a conversation with um with with my friend who we were talking about the Karate Kid remake, mm -hmm. and he said, well, you know, it was one of the biggest problems with that they didn't use any of the original music in that time and like you're the best, you're the best. Yeah, any of that stuff and, and and i brought up and i brought up footloose to him and i said that what was cool about footloose is because even even though maybe you know they changed it with some current artists and stuff too it was the same songs because it's it brought you into that it made you remember what you loved about the first one mm -hmm. yeah is, is, I, I couldn't hear is katie in the studio right now yeah i'm here She's a. I, sometimes I sometimes I don't say much. <laughs> she, oh, it's okay. No, I just want to say I'm a big fan. I'm so sorry. I'm not there to meet you and everything. Oh no no no! I I wish that you were here. I'm such a huge fan of you as well. I'm the hustle and flow is fucking amazing. Ah, oh, thank you, thank yeah. you. Do you get? You know, I, I'm going to kind of like respond to this, this. This what we were talking about about like this kind of depression that hits you after you 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 leave a project. Like even even. Even, whatever happens, whether it's like a good project or a bad project, there is like this, this, you know, sadness that I kind of fall into a little bit, you know, where it's like, huh, you know, it, 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 was anything of that worth it? Like every single movie I do it with, do you, do you feel that at all? Or, or am I, am, am I just the nuts up? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I feel it with, um, with television for sure. Like television when that goes for more than a season, I definitely feel it for, I think that, um, I think that if I if I was directing or was writing, I think I would feel it for film as well. But because film is such a shorter process than television, I, right. I don't really I really don't have the kind of like that emotional like empty nest feeling, you know, when it's over. Um, of but course, I, having said that, she just got off a movie project. She's been drinking since ten thirty this morning, <laughs> so maybe we need to have a little bit of an intervention here. That's right. Yeah. Oh God, no, that's true. No, but I have it for television. It's just 
it's just weird because like I, 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 you know, I've been taking a break because I've been like really busy because I, you know, I finished Footloose and then I, I, I produced this Katy Perry movie and which and, was fantastic, uh, by the way. I oh, loved the you. Katy. I, I really loved the Katy Perry movie. Sorry about that, but I, I got home and I'm, I go out to this um, circus like that that was playing at the, this local venue, and I'm there with my daughter, and she's four, right? And she's sitting on my lap in these in this outdoor theater, and I'm, it, it was the weirdest moment where I was just like, I, I started thinking like, man, I'm kind of bummed. Like, I need to get back into a movie, like, you know, just kind of have foot loose and. And, and going right into this other thing and it's like what, what should I be doing like what's the right decision have I made the right decision and start getting like a little bit down like you start questioning yourself and then the holding out for a hero song came on but it was our <laughs> version of it that this that this local Tennessee uh, girl named Ellen May Bowen did that was like really soulful and kind of country and it was the most beautiful thing and my daughter is singing it at full tilt That's cool. and then I realized like there's a bunch of other girls singing it and I was like okay I think I think I just found the ultimate justification for why Footloose should have been remade because I don't know if any of these kids would be singing it as loud as they were if if they if if you were just left up to say maybe when you're older you're going to watch a movie that's in, you know that's from the '80s or something like that it it felt it was the first time that I was like I, you know what I did the right thing yeah no it it really did open it up for a completely different audience yeah. which is great and I think and it did it in a way too where it didn't go I'm like not, nothing against Glee it has its audience but it's not the exact audience I think that you know you were trying to reach and I think that you went way above that. Because that's what I was worried about. I was like, oh, this is going to be for like the Glee, so you think you can dance crowd. And it wasn't that. You had people from that generation, but it also, it did speak to us who loved the original as well. Yeah, and even the Katy Perry movie is because we went to go see that. And, yeah. and outside the screening, they had like this booth where, you know, you, couples could kiss. And so me and Christian are just kind of sitting there like idiots. And they take a picture of us. <laughs> but you go in and the Katy Perry movie really didn't, it, just, it didn't just appeal to Katy Perry fans. It appealed to really anybody who likes big music acts. Yeah. And you like to see this huge huge production and what goes into it on stage and the emotions behind getting on that stage and performing in front of 100,000 yeah. people. You know what was interesting about the Katy Perry movie that I found, you know, I just, I downloaded it onto my my laptop because I, you know, was on set watching movies or whatever, but, um, and I had such a tremendous amount of respect for her and I, I, I don't even listen to her music and I had such a massive amount of respect for her when I saw her life falling apart and she had to pull herself to get on stage, pull herself together and was like, no, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And it was just this massive moment where I was like, oh my God, other people go through what I go through sometimes <laughs> right. where this is like, you're literally pulling yourself up by the coattails. Like tonight. Like, like today, <laughs> when I've been drinking since 1045. Um, and, and I just, I became, after that, I went out and I downloaded her CD and I was like, I love this person now. Wow. Well, and yeah, I, I, I saw in love too. It's, it's, it's really, it, it's, it's funny because I really have to give her credit because she, she wasn't fighting me and the, and the, and the directors on including that for, you know, not wanting her audience to see her vulnerable. She wasn't fighting that. She just, she wanted to be respectful enough because I think she didn't want it to come off like, uh, you know, she was, you know, bashing on, on Russell or right. anything like that. Right. It, it, she wanted it to be real. And I, and I, I, I just, I, in a world where like there are a lot of reality TV and people are just like, oh, just give me a camera so I can cry and bear my soul so maybe I can get famous. Like, I can guarantee you that is not what was happening there. And like, I really got to give it to her because I would have these talks like, Katie, I'm telling you, you know, there's, the, w this is going to be a moment where people go, oh my God, I, I think I know Katie, like I think I know what she's she's going through, and and so it's like you know my wife is the same way, you know I mean like and she you know she's a mother too and working hard and like there are times where it's just all exploding and you still got to get up on the stage and so right. I, yeah. I'm I'm glad you responded to that. Moment. No, I did, and you know, and there's obviously you know from a viewer standpoint, there's two sides to every story, and this is her side of things, obviously, but you know, not once did she bash Russell, not once did you get a bad opinion of him. It just didn't yeah. work. Well, and, and, and in, in, and, and and you saw that, and yeah. that was great, and that's why I respected it. You but know? in all honesty, she didn't have to bash Russell. Her fans would do it for her. When we're in the screening for this 
movie, as soon as a guy comes on screen, it was like Maleficent from Sleeping Beauty <laughs> appeared for the first time. The fans were not pleased. No. But, but they love the movie. They're, they're yeah, going crazy through the fun. whole thing. And so, Craig, you know, that actually brings me, because that's one of the, that's right after that movie is when we started talking with you. Uh, you know, Mark and I promised each other we'd ask you this question. How did you find us, uh, the, the two idiot schmoes that you're talking to right now? <laughs> Because I can tell you how I found him, and it's probably not the same way. <laughs> it was uh, it was on YouTube. I was uh, I was looking around at, um, and and it wasn't even a review of Footloose. I can't remember what review it was. Um, but I found you guys on YouTube, and I and I started clicking, and then I and I saw, oh wait, hey, wait a minute, they've they've done one of Footloose, and I genuinely liked your guys' review, like. I, I, it felt very, like it felt very real, very natural. I was like, I wish it could be like this. Like, I wish, I wish reviews kind of more, um, you know, uh, personified like what it is like when just friends are talking or, 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 or you know, just people are hanging about talking about movies. Like, I, you know, it, 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 it I don't know. It just entertained me. So I just kept, I just kept watching. And I followed you guys on Twitter. I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the, uh, the top five confusing movies recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, okay. You know what's funny is that we, we shot that after we saw Cloud Atlas. So we had like three hours of Cloud Atlas in our brains, and we had to yeah. shoot this thing That's at That's a 10. Cloud Atlas. I, like my soda my soda cabinet confused me. So Yeah, we, we'll go we'll fight each other tooth and nail on some of these top five lists because it's both of our combined opinions. But we're so tired by that point. I'm throwing Christian under the bus. He said AI, and I'm like, I, sure, go with it. I'm still going with it because, look, the, the, here's, here's the thing. One of the reasons it was confusing, and maybe more it was the confusing in the production more than anything else, was the fact that, you know, right. the late, great Stanley Kubrick, it was, it was his uh -huh. movie, Steve. Steven Spielberg took over, so you could tell it was like the first half of it was Steven Spielberg, the second half was like a Kubrick movie, and then you had the the, the Sixth Sense <laughs> kid running around talking to robots and Jude Law's doing God knows what, and it's just, I think maybe because I just bailed on it, that my head said it was confusing. <laughs> I liked right, Jude Law right. in that movie. Because he was hot. Yeah. It's Jude Law. He's, Listen, he's hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's cool. I, you know, and it's funny because I, I heard something in your review where it's like, oh my God, that's when I saw AI yeah, the first time I thought that too, which is like the thing with the aliens at the end, right? Right, that's what, that's what I mean. I, that whole thing. I mean, were those the aliens from Attack then, of the Clones? But then I realized <laughs> that they're not, and then it got to be a better movie for me. Yeah, see, I... I they're, not, they're not aliens. They're us. They're just kind of like where we're going to be going eventually. That's like artificial intelligence. It's oh. going to be like, that's going to be the life on planet are these robots. And actually the kid is the most human and the, the most cherished relic of the future consciousness of humanity. And, you know, I mean, have, have you guys seen like Battlestar Galactica or anything like that? You know, there's, it's, like, um, it's the same thing. You know? well, 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 Craig, I would love to watch it, but the star, Katie Sackhoff, refuses to bring in the DVD collection. She's promised me for months Because Ellis now. is fucking cheap, and you should go buy the damn thing. I'm going to go ahead with the that, yeah, option B is definitely the reason. Uh, so, uh, Craig, sorry. I'll pop off your ass on, on that. I, 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 I just like, I like your, I like your guys' reviews. But, Thank you. Uh, no, I'm glad, I'm glad that you broke our balls on it, because uh, there's, I mean, we, that, we do that list, and it's for movies.com. We have a lot of fun, and that's to their credit. Uh, Movies.com has started to do more of what you just talked about, as far as the regular person giving the reviews and talking. It's not just the kind of stuffy critic now. And that's what I love. That's what Mark and I love about doing YouTube so much is that we, there is this community out there of these of reviewers that are doing these types of reviews. And it's uh, it's a new it's it's it, because of the internet, because of these video reviews, it's it's now a, a new way of reviews, and I think more people are listening to them than before. And they're trying to copy us, and we're not going to let them because oh, yeah, we're originals. Stop, There's only one uh, show. Yeah. I mean, that was kind of the impetus. Two. I mean, two. No, for, me. for us. Do, yeah, nice. Pat yourself on the back there. Um, is, is, that was the impetus for us doing the reviews initially. And so I want to ask you about how you got how you got started. You seem like a guy that kind of that, that plays by his gut, uses his emotions to his credit. Was there was there a, a moment in your life when you're like, all right, I need to start making movies, or this is what I want to do? Did you did you see a film? Was it something that happened in your life that made you want to start doing this? Yeah, I mean, I think it was, you know, I, I grew up just loving movies, but I think it was, um, it was when I moved to Memphis, you know, um, my whole family is from here, but I spent a lot of my life in, in Northern California, and I did a lot of theater out in Northern California, so I would like, I was in productions, I'd direct productions, and I'd write plays, but when I moved to Memphis, I, I just had this idea that I wanted to try to make a a feature, and it was it was in like like the late nineties, and before my dad died, he and my it's so funny because my dad like he was just he was like a total 
film nerd. Like, he was in shipping. He, he was, he sold containers where he would, like, ship cars across the Pacific. But he loved movies, and, and, he, and he always would, like, bring me articles that he would read. And I remember him calling me and saying, like, you know, don't shoot on film. You know, you're going to, yeah. everybody's trying to shoot their indie film on film and max out their credit cards. He's like, you need to just do one of these high eight cameras and then get a computer and, and, and get more into editing. And and, uh, and that was kind of like the last thing he said to me. And I, and I got like 20 grand of inheritance from my from my mother, from his death. And um, me and my wife and her sister and her brother in this this house in Memphis, this shotgun house, this real teeny house, we started making movies, you know, like video cool. cameras and everything. And uh, if you watch Hustle and Flow, that's what Hustle and Flow is about. Like, it's about it's about us in this tiny house uh, getting sick of just talking about wanting to do what we want to do and, and like, deciding, like, well, okay, let's just do it, even if it's terrible, even if it's ugly, even if it means that we're going to start fighting with each other and, and <laughs> let's start living passionately instead of just paying the rent. That's so a, that, that's, well, that's it. Was, a, it was just, it was Memphis, really. Memphis was the thing that that really got me into it. Yeah, I mean, and that's and that's what it seems like. That's that seems to be the heart of and soul of kind of where your where your passion comes from. Yeah. So, Usually, it inspires people to pick up an instrument, but Craig's like, nah, I'm nah, going, I'm going uh, different." That is my. He did pick up his instrument. That's his instrument, the cameras, and he, and, it, and it worked. Oh, look at you! Look at me. Yeah. That's what I did. So, well done, Christian. I appreciate that. that. Thank you, thank you. So I love Memphis. Well, <laughs> this is what I want to do because we got to go to break in a second here, but we're gonna come back with Craig because I want to talk to him a little bit more about um, about uh, hustle and flow. But uh, they, I have a lot of questions from Schmoville, Craig. They want to talk to you about. Um, some directing questions of a lot of aspiring directors out there that have some questions for you as well. Um, and we're going to find out if he was invited to Justin Timberlake's wedding. But before that, uh, let, let's uh, – Mark, go ahead real quick. No, we have a special announcement that we're going to give to Schmoville on the other side of this break. So take, stay tuned for that big, big announcement. Yeah, how long, hey, Jeff, how long is our break? 30 minutes? Okay, wait, three, three, three minutes. minutes. <laughs> it's not 30. Uh, so, Craig, we have about a three-minute break just to give you a heads up. Cool. Okay. Look at that. That's 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 respect. It's respect. Woo! All right, guys, you're back in the Schmoes No podcast. The whole crew is back. We have Katie Sackhoff here, myself, Mark Ellis, and we're joined by the very talented director, Craig Brewer, via phone in Memphis. And we're going to talk to Craig in a second. Uh, we're going to answer some calls from Schmoville. Then we're going to talk remakes and reboots. But first... Marcus Aurelius Ellis, you have a qu you have a little thing you want to talk to the kids about. That's right. For boys and girls of all ages, it has been a big year for the Schmoes, been a big year for Christian, for Katie, and now for Mr. Mark Ellis. Guys, I'm very excited to announce on our podcast that my debut stand-up comedy album will be coming out November 13th. It is called Get to the Castle. Woo! You can see it in the view right there. I'm very excited about it. Uh, it's being put up by Rooftop Records, the largest producer of comedy albums in the world. For some reason, they wanted to do a record with me. So November 13th, you can get it on all the platforms and in-stores, especially iTunes and Amazon. A week before that, it's going to be available to listen to on Pandora on the Mark Ellis station. So Whoa. you can uh, check it out on Pandora before you want to buy it. Then November 13th is the big day we take down Adele. Wow. Just in time for the holidays. And before you know it, Craig Brewer will tip. be producing your uh, documentary. That's right. They'll, they'll... You know what's funny about that is that Craig brought up something before the break, and I kind of sympathize with him and Katie, where you talk about you get done with a project, then you get emotional about it. Like, listening to that, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm excited that it's finally done and it's coming out, yeah. but now I'm thinking, shit, i got to write another yeah. F an hour. i got, yeah. I got ten minutes about Chick-fil-A right now, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, okay. So here now, now we're back uh, with Craig Brewer. Now, Craig, uh, f a couple of the questions have come in from Schmoville, so I wanted to ask you some stuff here. And Schmoville, please tweet us in at at Schmoville, at Schmoville, at Schmoes No, or at Katie Sackoff. And we're answering some questions now, and we're going to ask Craig Brewer some questions. So the first one is from Matt Brown at Call Me Roy eighty eight. How do you approach a remake differently than original material? It doesn't that limit the free creative process? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it, look, I think it does limit the creative process a little bit, but there's also something that's kind of liberating about it because, um, like, I was a really big fan of uh, the TV show The Shield. Mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, you guys watched yeah, it. I loved it. And you, and you directed an episode, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. 
It was and, great. I, and I got to direct an episode awesome. of it. And up until then, I had only directed my own stuff. But there was something about being a fan of the show that, that made me want to be in, in service to it instead of it to me. Which, when you write something there's and you direct something, you're making something, there there is this feeling that, you you know, it's it's all about your, mm-hmm. your thoughts and mind and signature. And even though you do need to apply that to a remake, there is something nice about, like, saying, like, okay, well, I'm going to, like, do a play of Tennessee Williams, and I want it to be me, but it also has to serve the voice of this particular, you know, uh, author. And so I, I guess I just, I tried to treat Footloose with the same kind of respect. I really loved the story of Dean Pitchford, who wrote the original Footloose. Um, you know, he was a guy that found out about that town in Oklahoma that had, you know, had a law in the books. And, you know, he's a songwriter. He had, he had done a lot of songs that had been in movies, but he, he had this spark. Like, I, I think I can write a movie. And he flew off to Oklahoma, you know, hung out with the, the school officials and the town people and, you know, wrote a script and made a classic movie. And it, it there's... There's something about what he chose to do in in his story that I think back of myself when I was like 13, and I sparked to it. I needed Ren McCormick, you know. I needed like there to be like this, at least my 80s ideal of what a, of what a rebel was. And I guess I just felt a certain bit of um, I, I was thankful, you know. And I wanted to. I remember I met with with Dean before we start shooting and I told him it's like look I you know I I know that the studio like kind of owns this and they don't have to call you at all but I'm not even going to make this until I tell you what I want to do with it and tell you that like I come from theater and I kind of view doing Footloose this kind of a um, a revival but not not in a way where you know we're just we're doing the exact same thing I'd like to kind of imbue some of the things that I start to in my region, you know, and what the region sometimes will yield in terms of drama when it comes to religion, when it comes from, when it comes to red state versus blue state and all this stuff. I kind of, I, I told him, I was like, I, I think that there's like all these fighting going on right now. And I think if suddenly you took everybody's kids and you said, and you took them away and you said, I think there's been an accident and your child might be involved. Like it, all that bullshit just goes right yeah. out the window. And I, I think there's a reason why we should, do it now for the 13 year olds that are like me watching it and hopefully losing their losing it over it like I did and so that's how you that's how you can kind of be liberated by pre-existing material because you can find the places where you can put your right. yourself into it but at the same time you have to be reverent to that original material at least what whatever that original material did that worked for an audience. Well, and I think that, and I, that's what we're going to get into in a little bit too, about these other, uh, some of the remakes that have worked and some of the ones that have failed. Um, and I think that your points were, I mean, that's, that's, I think the people who are making remakes should approach it that way. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's not just putting, it's not just doing it again. It's actually taking the emotions yeah. that you felt there you have to. And, and, and taking all the internal stuff that you didn't see on screen. That's what it needs yeah. to start with. And then all the other stuff kind of falls into place. And I think that what it is, though, too, and Craig, please correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think that if you take something like Footloose that was beloved and you do it the way Craig did it to where you say, okay, look, here's the things I loved about it. I'm going to put this. Here's my spin on it. I'm going to add some things. But then there's just some shit piece movie out there that they, someone loved the, the premise for, but yeah. the movie wasn't that great. And then they go, okay, Okay, look, let's remake this thing. Then, then it's then it's free game. Then you do okay. I want to do whatever right. because there's a, there, here's a certain elements of the parts of it that worked. Well, yeah, you can't. Right. Well, then you just have Battles of Galactica. You know? <laughs> no, I'm, but, but what I'm saying, like you have you have the idea instead of you know the difference between like taking something like Footloose that was like not only was it was it acc- acclaimed and people loved it, but it was a success. And then right. you you have if something you like if you didn't have your mic's off. Yeah. Who turned my mic on? I, I, I plug one CD, and then you guys just cut the mic? Is that how it goes? Well, that's through? what happens when you're not around. I, get, I told Jeff when you were gone that when you come back and you get out of whack to cut you off. Yeah, okay, well, look, that, then I was just going to I was gonna compliment Craig on keeping the barn scene because if you didn't have that yes. barn dancing scene, Christian Harloff, I didn't know how much in love he was with the original well, barn was, scene until we actually well, shot the no, original. Don't, 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 bring that, don't bring that up, though, because that was the only thing. That was the only thing, Craig, was my thing was uh, my, out of the whole movie was the barn scene. I just felt – I thought – the one, may have cried. I thought the one in the original. I just I felt a little more with Kevin than I did with uh, with, with uh, shit. With, with, are, are you are you 
you're talking about the angry dance where he's dancing all by himself? Yes. No, trust me. Yeah. Craig, yeah. The, the, the but, original but, one, it was almost like that Billy Squire Everybody Wants You video. It was like, dude, you need to stop dancing right now, okay? Yeah, I, I like the one I, in the remake a lot All right, better. fine. Well, regardless, okay. Now I like the one in the remake, too. All right, so see, I'm, a, I'm the douche. Okay, so here we go. So, um, there, <laughs> now, now there, no, it's tough. I mean, I like, the, I, I like what we did, but I, I think any warm would agree with me. Like, if you told me that I could, like, live on a desert island with just one of them, I can't help it. I got to go with the original. Yeah. I think I, if you're taking I, a barn dancing scene to a desert island, you got bigger problems. I know, no. And, I, and listen, and, and I, I thought that I thought that Kenny Wormo was was great as Ren. I just it was just that, it was that thing because I, I was you know I, was Kevin, I mean for God's sakes I loved uh, Quicksilver when I was a kid. All right, moving on, moving on. Um, so uh, so we have we have another question here from uh, at Thomas Abramson and uh, at uh, Captain Rex five hundred one. Uh, just saw Skyfall and it was great. And I was wondering if you could ask Craig if he would ever consider to direct a Bond movie. Only if he puts Katie Sackhoff in it. Only if he puts Katie Sackhoff in it. <laughs> That, that, that's my condition. Right. I don't know. You know, look, I think if Spielberg, after, you know, decades, you know, has been dropping pretty big hints that he would like to do a Bond movie and, and, and still, like, he's not doing one, I just don't know, you know. I don't think I should be, you know. Uh, it, it, it's, I love the Bond movies. I can't wait to see Sky Fall. Well, let me I mean, ask I've you then. i such great things, but have you guys seen it? No, no not I'm yet. We see, we see it next week, I think. But, you know, and there was, there was news, by the way, today. It's, it's, I don't know if it's confirmed or, or it's a big rumor going around the internet today that after Daniel Craig is done, uh, Idris Elba is supposed to be the new Bond. Oh, well, yeah, that could be because he's got a British accent, first of all. He's a badass, well, second wow. of all. And it yeah. would, it would, it would, it would, it you would, know, I would it, wait, wait, wait. Can James Bond drink Hennessy instead of a martini? Is that stop cool? It, or is stop it, it, you. Stop I, it. I got to tell you, I think, question here. Stop I think it. that it's a fantastic take on it, and I, I would did, love to see him do when, this. When I first, when I first heard it, I, you know, I did, with I did the Hennessy. I did the he- yeah, with, with the Hennessy. I, I put, it's a good joke. That dude, Idris Elba, is slick. Yeah, he is. He's oh, hot. Yeah. That shit. dude is slick. Oh, yeah. And the yeah. funny thing is that he was supposed to play Alex Cross, and now they're going to give him Bond. He's looking at everyone who didn't cast him across and went, fuck you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> so he's yeah. like, so. Th- yeah, no, yes. he, he is gorgeous, and he's smart, slick. and he's funny, yeah. and he's just, he's engaging, and I think that he's perfect. He can right. pull off a tux. So, so what, what if, so what if they came to you then and they said, look, Idris Elba, Craig, is going to be our James Bond. Katie Sackhoff is Katie going to play, is gonna play be, Pussy Galore. P- perfect. Yeah. I mean, it, good for you. Whatever. Harloff right. and Ellis are now, valets now, number now, one and two. Only so much a man can run from that. If you came to me with that, I'd be like, <laughs> and, hell yeah. And, I would really think about it. Okay. I'd really have to think about it. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So now here, you know, here's a question then, too. Uh, now, you, you just you said you were on a break and you just produced a Katy Perry movie. Now, I don't know if this is there. Some, are you doing something with Tarzan? Yeah, what it was, I don't, I don't mind talking. I can, I can talk to you about what I can talk to you about. Okay. There's a lot about it that I can't talk to you okay. about, but I don't mind. Uh, we're we're, we're you, used, we're um, used to that here. Yeah, with me. <laughs> sorry. I, no, I um, I, I wrote a script of Tarzan, and okay. uh, I'm not going to be directing it. But oh, okay. I think they're still using my, my, my story and my script. Oh. Um, and. Uh, um, is it great? Is it is it more like a, in the tone of like the Greystone back in the day, or is it more a little lighter? I I really am excited to not tell you from that, <laughs> but I'm telling you if you dug like Greystone, can you like yeah, I mean if if there's cool. if you actually are like a, a Tarzan fan who've read the books as well, I, I think that they're going to do a fantastic job with it. I, I I do like I think that the ball got rolling in the right direction. I'm proud that I believe I. You know, I kicked the ball. Hey, Craig, so, can I uh, can I ask you a question about yeah. that? Do you, do you sure. think do you think is it harder for you when you write something and then you don't direct it than to actually let somebody do it? Um, because I'm I'm working with someone right now who is a phenomenal writer, but gave away one of his first scripts to someone else to direct, and now he's big enough to direct it and he can't get it back. So is is it is it is it hard for you to give something up and actually you know, or is it it kind of liberating to have somebody else do it for you? It's, or, hard, you know. it's hard to give it up. Yeah. yeah, it's really hard to give it up because it's kind of like I mean, first of all, I'm 
you know, you, there's times you should give it up. There's times that you have to give it up. And right. there's times that maybe, you know, you, you, you give it up and you question yourself. But I think still, no matter what, like if you did your job with the script, it's still like somebody saying like, hey, you did a great job giving birth to this baby and now we're going to go raise it. Right. So, yeah, no. And, and, by, and by the way, you can't even go say goodbye to it. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like, right. it's not, it's not even another pair. You sold so, it on the black market is what you did. So <laughs> if, if you did a good job with it, then it's going to yeah. hurt right. Can they, can they at least like... Feels. Can they hire a guy to put the script on like a train window and as the train goes away, you just kind of <laughs> wave run and wave after right. it? I think that as long as this thing, I want this Tarzan thing to be more Johnny Weissmuller and no Phil Collins music, and I'm yeah. going to be really, really yeah, happy. Me too. I want to see a little more more epic. But all right, well then, then if you're not if you're not directing that one, um, when are you directing again? Because we got to see it. Because <laughs> again, uh, between the between Footloose and uh, Hustle and Flow and Black Sigma Moon, you shouldn't be sitting out this long, dude. It's like it's like when a good fighter is 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 sitting back and you're like, get in the ring and knock someone out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm uh, well. I'm writing a script right now that I'm really proud of and I'm really scared about, and uh, and that, that's usually a good combination. Okay. So uh, cool. Um, it's a. Uh, it's, I'm gonna. It's, I've been tying up a lot of like loose ends. But one thing I wanted to tell you guys is that um, my first movie has never been released, and I'm actually really proud of it. And uh, it's been remastered this last this year, and it's going to be coming out on Blu-ray oh, this cool. next year. And uh, it's called The Poor and the Hungry. It's it's my first movie that that basically John Singleton saw with Stephanie Lane, um, the producer, and that's how my career got started. Cause ah. I, I say say just that just one more time. It's Noble. It's, it's called the, the, the poor, the, the and, poor the and the hungry. When when, when can yeah. Schmoville find that on Blu-ray? Uh, it's probably. I, th- I think if, if the schedule still holds up, we're going to be finishing it this year, and then it'll be. You know, I'll either be you know selling it through Top Spin or or have some sort of distribution deal. But we just had it up res to high def and color with photo cam who's, who's done all my movies and you know they did it as a favor for me and it's got like a 5.1 mix but this is something I cut like all by myself and shot it's a feature film and it's actually a film that I'm most proud of and uh, and and is I think a good movie so it's gonna be fun. I've been I've been kind of like for me to move forward like oh man I don't know if you guys watch Louie but I just I just yeah. love this show yeah, me too. Louis. Yeah, yeah. and when David Lynch he like it lays out the three rules of show business. I, yeah. I in that episode, I yeah. was like, "Oh my god, I think that's really true." I don't know if you guys remember, but he was like, "Rule number one: look him in the eye and speak from the heart." Rule number two: sometimes you have to go away to come back. I was like, "Oh my god, I've, I have to go away a little bit yeah. and and then come back with a movie." But this this new movie that I'm writing, it's a little bit of a return to uh, to a little bit of a harder edge. Okay. And it's political, and wow. I've basically teamed up with this LA street art that I, uh, artist that I really respect, and we're we're coming with something kind of different and new and awesome. Yeah, we're we're That's happy to fantastic. hear. But but if Brewer keeps sitting out, I, I say if he's still on the sidelines in January 2013, we send Mr. T to his house like uh, Rocky Three. <laughs> We make, him, we right. make him direct the the next uh, ex, the female Expendables and make it all crazy cool and in That's the right. south and yeah. yeah. Well, um, that, oh, that, that would be cool. Well, that gets <laughs> hot in the south. You don't need all that clothing on it, you, girl. Exactly. Well, that's that's something too, Greg, because you're again you're a young director. As far as would you like to go? I mean, uh, you definitely have that knack to where you do you do the gritty stuff. And like you said, your next project that you're working on right now is more in the gritty. Would you ever do something in the vein of like a like a sci- like a sci-fi or like uh, like maybe like a crazy comedy or something along those lines or do you like the kind of stuff that you're doing now and that's that's where you want to be no i i, I really like sci-fi and i and i wouldn't mind you know there is a movie that i'm a, a, a test to direct and we're trying to put together right now which is you know a, along that vein and and i i definitely want to do that um I, I think that i i just got really inspired by kevin smith and red state i there was something about that that i felt like it may be you know there's the movie itself, but there's the way he put it out and the way he had that kind of ownership over it. And I was like, you know, I, I know it's going to be a bumpy road to this transition for not just me, but Hollywood, but like, it's all going here. And I, I want to, I want to try to do something that can be small, but still be like large to me. But at the same time, I would love to do, you know, uh, you know, a, 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 a larger movie that, you know, uh, it is commercial and a studio would feel really great about it, but it, it speaks to something that is important to me. And, and I, there's this one movie that I think that we, we might get going that, that does do that. And, 
you know, it's really kick ass and has, you know, some, some science fiction element to it. Well, you know, Mark had brought up right before we got on the phone with you, because uh, I don't know if you heard, um, one of our stories that we had talked about was the fact that I, I was a huge fan of X Men First Class, and I'm a big fan of Matthew Vaughn. And uh, he's stepping down or, or just doing another project or whatnot, but he'll still be producing and, and writing the sequel to this. But Brian Singer is rumored to be coming back. So Mark had a question. Yeah, well, I was just thinking, like, if you step back from a project that you're really devoted to and in love with, and I was thinking maybe, is it just easier to produce and write stuff than it is to direct? Like, is directing such a harder gig where you constantly are wrestling with a studio? And is that why sometimes you read about guys that were attached to direct and they kind of step back and they're like, I'm just going to produce this one? Well, I can tell you what is probably more true, and I, I, I hope I don't get in trouble for this, but I think that... Any version of the truth so, here is fine, as long as it comes from your mouth, good sir. All right, well, I think there are a lot of situations where you will see a director or a director-writer who has either retreated or moved on from a project, but you see them as a producer, but they're not they're not really a, an acting producer, but they deserve that title that yeah. they procured and either their deal because, you know, a studio is going to be making millions of dollars off that real estate of a story forever. And a filmmaker with a voice sat down with a writer or a producer or whatever and, and was wrangling that beast for a while and got that project further down the field. So I, I believe that they should have that credit, but it's not, it's, it's not like kind of what I just did with Katie, where Katie was like, no, we actually want you to produce this. Like right. you, you hire the directors, you, you, you wrangle, you help the studio and the whole project. And, and it, that was a first for me. And I actually loved it. So you what know, you're, what you're saying, seeing talented directors and like, you know, helping the whole process. But those projects where you usually see, like, I don't know if like, I mean, I don't want to speak for this. I don't know it, but like, you know, like Darren Aronofsky, I believe, is a producer of The Fighter. Uh, yeah, because he was attached to it at one point, right? But I think it was because he developed it and, right. and was attached to it at one point. And right. then when he moved off of it, it was either in his deal or, but I, right. I still also believe he deserves that credit. But that's usually what it is. Okay. Well, is that so, the best? So, is that the. Is that the best gig in Hollywood then? Is it like, yeah, I'm kind of produced. I just sit at home and I get a check. Well, 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 he so, does well. so, so what, you're, what, you're, what you're saying is you just explain why Steven Spielberg has his name on the Transformers. <laughs> That's what you're saying. All right. uh, yeah. yeah. That, that happened. My next movie is very, 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 very similar to that, where the original writer and developer of it was, you know, gave it away, moved on, yeah. and he's still a producer on the project. So it, yeah. it happens a lot. All right, so uh, Craig, I want to want to talk because I know you're a big movie fan like us, obviously. So we were uh, we took a we took a poll on Facebook on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Mo's No Cheap Plug, and um, we just hit we're over five thousand likes, everybody. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look we at that. have friends. No one in my high school can tell me different. You're, you're bragging to two people. The one on my left has like eighty thousand, and the one on the phone has like a hundred thousand. So that means nothing to them. Okay, so uh, <laughs> now we're talking about uh, any particular remakes or reboots that the fans wanted us to discuss, and guys. Again, tweet in if there's any other ones um, that you guys want to talk about. The, what the overwhelming one that they wanted us to talk about was because the new trailer came out for The Evil Dead. I can't wait to see that. Now, yeah. now let I'm me, excited to see it, too. Let me ask you guys this, because I, just, I, I was a huge fan mm -hmm. of the original. Um, now, I know... <laughs> Evil Dead 1 and Evil Dead 2 are essentially the same movie. They just kind of reshot right. it and, and changed it up and put some more humor in it. A lot more humor in right. Evil Dead 2. And, yeah. and that's why it's such a like, renowned series now because, or, or beloved you know, by like a cult classic or whatnot because of that humor and what Ash did. This movie, this trailer, looks like a great horror film. Yeah. It looks like a scary movie. It doesn't look like Evil Dead to me. It looks it looks it looks like what Evil Dead wanted to be the first Evil Dead. Yeah. It looks a lot like what that one aspired to be, but you just right. didn't have all the abilities with the effects. Like the the Red Band trailer for the new Evil Dead it, looks like everything. It, it looks like a 1985 director's wet dream. Like we can do we can kill people like that right. today. But don't you but don't you miss don't you miss the Craig? Did you see the trailer? I did, and I, I know what you're talking about because like I think the thing that's 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 making us weird on it is that we know Evil Dead 2. Yeah, and Ash. Like, yeah. It, 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 I, I just think that there's... there's it, it also could be the Red Band trailer. Like, it could be like, is there more humor in it that I'm just not seeing? Like, is there a little bit of that 
it was just a hint of a wink in the first one. I mean, the second one right. was pretty much winking. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, 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 they put, he pushed it a bit, and I love it. But the first one, it just got that, you know, it's just grainy, and it just, it's got that great feeling that you get, like, when you're watching the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's like, man, this is just like a stone throw away from snuff. It's just, there were some responsible <laughs> right. people around. Right. You know what I mean? Like, there's, <laughs> it just feels a little better, you know what I mean? And so, I know what you're talking about. This looks slick, mm -hmm. but I guess I was seeing, like, you know, that whole scene where the branches are wrapping around her and I'm seeing like the, you know, the the girl who's just completely like demented and covered in blood and cut their tongue. And I was like, yikes, man, they are really calling for it on this. Yeah, that, and, that, and maybe this is going to be a screen fest in the audience. Like, I can't wait to watch that movie in Memphis, Tennessee. Let me tell right. you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> wild. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm sure so, it's going to be crazy. I mean, I, I, as I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It doesn't feel like it doesn't have that signature feel that when you watch the first one you're like yeah that's evil dead right I mean, it means like never get that i know? felt i felt that type of vibe when i saw cabin in the woods that was the type of vibe right. i got i got that evil dead vibe from cabin in the woods because it was that fun yet could still go in a crazy direction i still knew i was watching a crazy kind of horror film but it was still playing off of it and that's what i was hoping with the evil dead remake and you got Raimi attached again using the attached word and bruce campbell as well who's been at the panels talking about it as well so I mean, it, it could be cool, but um, I think you trust in Bruce Campbell. I think they're yeah. going to inject personality. I think this this trailer was mainly to shock people. Yeah. Um, but then you know, and then I guess we can get when we get into remix. I got a couple other horror movies that I think were really good remakes that were necessary ones and yes. really panned out. We'll well, we'll talk about that for sure. Um, and I don't know how long, Craig, if you can stick out to the end of the show if you want to, or if you got to go. Um, totally up to you. Um, but let me ask you one more question before you decide that. <laughs> um, <laughs> at uh, at Greg Sp at Greg Spaulding one hundred one asks if Craig could direct a super superhero reboot which one would he direct and why flash gordon counts <laughs> i added that in oh man that's fast because you know flash gordon was like one of those movie experiences that's one of those movies that i went and saw and i thought it was the greatest thing ever <laughs> yeah me too and then i saw it recently and i was like oh oh but it does have my favorite line in cinema history which one which flash one gordon for the, oh just when Ming's daughter is sat down to that rock oh yeah 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 and they're like Bring out the boar worms. And she's father! And father! And her hair is falling down into her face, and she's like, no, not the boar worms. And I just remember thinking as a kid, just like, yeah, yeah, bring, bring those boar worms. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> what's the post for it? Uh, you know, I really don't know, but I will be honest with you. I do have, like, I've, I've got a little bit, I, I, I do want to do something with a superhero. Who? I just don't know. I don't know what it is. There is things in the Marvel universe that I think I like over mm -hmm. the DC universe. Okay. Um, you know, like Daughters of the Dragon or something like that. Or, or, or you know, there's there's a couple of things that I wouldn't be, you know, that I would, I would want to do. But I can't think of anything that would be like, okay, well, what's a superhero movie that has happened before, you know, and, and, and do again? I mean, I'm always a big advocate that I think there should be a sequel to The Three Amigos. Oh, nice. oh yeah, there you go. That. Every chance I get to say it out loud, I talked to Justin about it. I was like, <laughs> he's got to be, you know, he would be the perfect. Like you do it, like in the, you know, in like World War II, you know, or something like that, where like the son of Steve Martin's character, like Dusty, goes goes behind in the in, down in the Pacific, and they got to put the costumes on again. <laughs> That's so, like, great. Those would those would be the heroes I would want to see, like if I do some. But I, I can't think of anything like right off the top of my head that I'd want to redo. That's okay. my my kind of guy. You say superhero movie, he goes to Three Amigos. I like Craig Brewer. I know. Brewer. That was yeah. very interesting. I was I was going to ask female or, or male action hero or superhero. I like that. I'm sure Craig wants to do Wonder Woman with Katie Sackhoff. I'm sure that's at the top No, of I was going to throw out Typhoid Mary and say, let's do this, Whoa. buddy. Ooh, wow. wow. So Craig, okay. Craig, you got to be in studio soon, dude, when you come back in next month. So, Craig, are you, are you uh, do we have you for half an hour or you got a bell? It's eleven thirty. I do actually have to bail. Okay. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take my daughter to school in the morning. I okay. have to drive home. I'm, I'm downtown, but I'm loving this. This has been great. No problem, and, and thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure to have you. And please, when you're in town, come visit us because we'd love to have you. I'd love to. I could, I could probably have a lot more to talk to you about in terms of projects by then. Okay, no problem. Thanks again, dude. Good luck with everything you're doing. And uh, and the last thing I want to tell you that I and I talked to you briefly about this on the phone was I thought what you did for that girl that did the Footloose song was so great 
and so nice. He, he, there, was a, there was a fan that posted this song, this rap. He tweeted it. He, he put it out and made a video about it. And he brought this girl in with the cast and had him sing to this whole thing. And they sang. There's a video out there. You guys should check out. Craig, what's your, what's your, YouTube, uh, your YouTube handle? It's uh, my blue tube. Okay, so Shmovel, check that out and uh, and subscribe to him and let him know that you that you heard him on the podcast. And again, Craig, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks really so much, brother. Craig Thanks, Brewer, Craig. Gentlemen, Craig Brewer. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you all. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Uh oh. We're, hey, hey, silly pants, Ron. Silly right. pants? Sure. When I'm talking to my daughter, Did all this. Call sudden. me silly pants. <laughs> call, call me silly pants. We gotta put. <laughs> This is my daughter. Oh, my God. All right. So, holy shit. All right, guys. You are in Schmoville. We're three beers deep. Who do we got? Hi. Uh, this is Josh. What's up, Josh? What are you calling in about, buddy? Um. Well, for one, I want to give a shout out to my friend, uh, Josh Corbato. Yeah, Josh is a great reviewer, oh, yeah. man. Good dude. Good reviewer. Yeah. Uh, just a friend from back at home. Cool. Uh, the second thing is, uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, who do you hope uh, is going to be Directing the Assassin's Creed uh, movie coming out. Good one. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I mean, great question. When I heard Kenny read that up top, I got really excited yeah. because I've played some of the Assassin's Creed games, but this new Assassin's Creed game where it's like the dude sneaking around Revolutionary War era America and killing Fastbender, and that is Fastbender. I mean, come on. That's man. gonna be Michael Fastbender. Fastbender, yeah. do it. What Just yeah. do it. What about uh, feel no shame? What about our, I don't have shame. Do it. Yeah. What about our boy from that directed uh, sh- that directed Shame? Uh, yeah, okay. Can maybe. he do, can he do action? That's can, why not. I mean, it's non sex addict. Action? What I like to see maybe is what about uh, Nicholas Winding Refn? He just because Gosling just bailed out of um out, out of Logan's run on him. Yeah. So maybe, talking about reboots or yeah. remakes. Why not him? Do, I don't know if that means that that project project is dead. It just means Gosling's doing something. Yeah, else. but you know, video games, uh, video games into film can go one of two ways. And we're talking about adapting stuff to the screen or remaking stuff. And and sometimes it's really good or it's really bad. Uh, but by the way, we loved Wreck It Ralph, so check that out. Yeah, oh, we I'm did. so excited sure. to see that. Our, Great our, movie. Yeah. So someone tweeted in. Are you guys hearing what we're saying? Because someone tweeted in that the audio isn't working. The so. audio is not working. Uh oh. Well, if America can't hear this golden radio voice, I just don't know if it's worth living. Let's hope that's working. Um. Anyway, okay. So we're taking calls from. Schmobile, tweet us in anything that you want to talk about as far as remakes and reboots. We're taking mm-hmm. calls from Schmobile right now. We haven't talked to you guys. Uh, we're very excited that we had Craig Brewer on the show. That guy is super cool. So very, good, man. Very He's ha- awesome. I like Dude, him. Dude, he is so cool, and I'm so happy that we were able to talk to him for so long. Um, all right, you're in Schmobile. Who do we got? Hey, Schmo, it's Sean here. What's up, Sean? What do you got for us, bud? Now, uh, I tend to disregard Iron Man 2 as the plotless, mindless, Michael Bay light disappointment that it was. But now I'm starting to get a darker Marvel slash Dark Knight vibe from Iron Man 3. Yeah. I think that this movie might end up faring better than the second one and might end up even earning more love from critics than the first one. What do you think? Will the third film in the series propel the franchise to new heights and make up for Iron Man 2? Or is it too early to decide? Fantastic, fantastic question. Very uh, well that was, thought out. Yes. Yeah, Pat Oswalt. Mul- multi, multi part. <laughs> that was fantastic. It was great. Question. Great buddy. question. Uh, that, that was like, he should be moderating the presidential debate. He should, so he should, be, hosting, should be hosting this podcast. That fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think deal. that the third one, what I think happened with the second one, to be fair to John Favreau, was that he was rushed. I yeah. think he was rushed. And they said, you know, he's like, okay, the first one was so good. We, we needed it out quick, quick, quick. And Favreau was like, all right, I'll, I'll do what I can. And. He did what what he could do. I, I don't blame that on Favreau good whatsoever. Action sequences. No, I, Favreau's I, amazing. Yeah, no, he's great. I, I he's, like he, the ending. I, I think this new one. I think Iron Man three is going to be the critics' darling for the, for reasons that I'm ambivalent towards. Is because yeah. people always love when a superhero gets down yeah. and out, and he gets his ass kicked. Like everybody thinks. Sound Empire is Strikes gone back on, the, on the show. Apparently, is the uh, I don't sounds, know what's going on. Sounds gone on the show. Okay. All right, well, we're going to go check. I guess we're still going to talk, though. Because we'll, just, we'll talk, but people, yeah. So yeah, some people are saying this, this sound's gone. Well, let's keep believing. Let's, let's, let's right. act like Journey not stop believing. Um, because, uh, you know, hold on. Yeah, Katie, uh, what, a, what'd you write? A homemade sign that says, a, hold on. Hold on. Okay, yeah. We're, we're looking. So if, you, if you can hear the sound, give a thou, thumb, thumbs up. By the way, did you have uh, a southern accent, Katie, in, the, in your new film? She had a southern accent when she was did talking you, to Craig Brewer. Did you have a southern accent when you in your film? No, I had a regular accent, but my... Like well, hey, Craig yeah. Brewer, yeah, okay, if you're going to make a superhero movie, yeah. you may as well cast me in it, because I'm just, I'm just such a good actor. My, my guy's family is all from the South, so it kind of comes pretty... 
What Pretty. part of the South is he? Is this is this mystery man the shadow from? Scott's family's from New Orleans. Oh, <laughs> and, yes. and Mississippi. That's, that's okay. deep gotcha. South. New Orleans and Mississippi. Okay. That's like um, a gator ate my baby. Yeah, no, so that is like a gator ate my baby. Yes, because it happens all the time. All right, so we're not. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. Lock up your youngins. I don't think anybody hears what anything we're saying right now. No. So it doesn't matter. No, yeah. so it doesn't even matter. Doesn't yeah. even matter. Right. When yeah. I call him. Uh, Sound is on. So your audio's working. No I, vid. And way behind, sound is gone for the you know video. What's, you know audio what's great is that now we have audio. It's gone okay. on the video stream. We don't but, have video. So I, I just like to watch Jeff panic. But we do have audio. So I find. Yeah. I uh, swear to God, I didn't unplug anything. Katie, with what? all your drinking. It's chaos. Listen, your... I, like I said, I've been drinking since 10 John, look at that, Look how cool Johnny Ice comes in here. Dude. Not sweating or anything. Johnny Ice walks in and like, I, what the fuck's going on, guys? Come I on. Smoking him a joint about in the that. back. Are Before, we the last we people break. on Toad Hop? Or is there like... Then we're not even on right now. We're not talking to anybody. All um, of a sudden, now I have a New York accent. Are we good? Okay, we're back. We're good. All right, John, Johnny Ace came here, iced it all Jesus. down. Jeff, the engineer, stop panicking. You guys missed. <laughs> <laughs> that was too, seriously. <laughs> You are panicking. It was a, that was a mild panic. <laughs> but I love you to death, so it's totally fine. He's giving me the dagger eyes. Jeff, the engineer, and Christian are all having a, a, a feud. A we feud. have missed something. You have. We've had Mark. a little bit of a yeah, feud. Yeah, Katie, something's going on. All I would like to say to our fans is that we're back, and we have the combination. All right, we're back. We're back. Okay, we're back. So here's here's what here's balls. I'm here's, sorry. There's a combination. Yeah. yeah. All right. Do dragon noises. Do dragon noises. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. That's where Katie and I went for three weeks. It's we totally fine. Out. We were hanging out with in with the uh, <laughs> Game of Thrones people. Yeah. <laughs> with the baby dragons. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> so, well, there, did, did, that's the Game of I'm Thrones. That's more. the Game of Thrones poster you need to see. That Leanne did. There's a picture of you as Khaleesi with a no, little dragon I Ellis thought, on the thing. Yeah. It's, it's hysterical. Okay. It's fantastic. Now Listen, here, guys. It. So when last week we debuted um, our new intern, Josh the intern. Who is going to pop into? Is your is your mic working? I think so. You, you stick your mug in there. Get a little. Do you want to slide yeah, over? We're good. Do you want to slide you, over next to yes, everybody? Like time, a, are you kidding me? Scoot he, on in he's, here. He's nervous. He's Scoot nervous. Scoot on in here. So there you go. Okay, that's that's what and people were asking. Well, what does he get in his internship? He just got it. He's sitting next to Katie Sacco. So um, wait, so, I just dropped something. I'm sorry. Oh. oh. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now look at bright red, bright red. Jo- Josh, how are you, man? I'm good, man. I'm glad I'm having a blast here. Um, so let me ask you a question, Josh. So you, uh, I saw your tweets. You can follow Josh, by the way, at uh, Sh- at Schmo's intern. Nice. Um, now nice. he, uh, you saw a couple of the, you saw the trailer for Iron Man. You saw the trailer for for Evil Dead. Uh, how are you feeling about the Evil Dead thing, real quick? Not to rehash on it too much. Um, I was listening to Craig Burr, and he made a lot of good points. I feel like Evil Dead for me was like a product of the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, they made it on a shoestring, uh, shoestring budget. Yeah. yeah. It's all right. You, you, yeah. You've been drinking, like, too. You're fine. <laughs> and I think that adds to the charm. When I saw that trailer, it just it looks too clean for me. It looks mm. like too polished, too production. And I understand they're definitely going for, like, Evil Dead 1 vibe because yeah. that was straight-up horror. Yeah. yeah. But for me, besides The Shining, I'd say Evil Dead 2 is probably my favorite horror film right. of all okay. time. I haven't seen two. I love oh, it. Man. I, you know how hard yeah. it is to Army make like, comedy and horror? No, I've never oh, seen it. And yeah. just pulled it off perfect. Okay. And I just... I, I, th- I have a feeling horror. that that was the shock in awe trail, and I have a feeling that they're going to inject some more humor maybe than you saw in the first Evil Dead movie, but I, I could be wrong. I like that trailer a lot more than right. the than the Carrie trailer that we saw. It was really just a Carrie teaser. Yeah, I missed but, the Carrie but I, I Are they didn't... making Carrie again? Yeah, and uh, Chloe, Chloe Moretz is doing Fucking it. Fucking Carrie. Yeah, I mean, like, it zooms in on her, and it just it didn't look like Carrie you don't know Chloe to me. It didn't look like it was going to be a horror film. Do you remember Carrie 2? So aggressive all of a sudden. Carrie 2 The Rage was horrible. Did anybody see that? Any most, what? What is what is Mama doing? She goes, over there? She's like, I, she goes, oh my God, shoot me. And I said, Chloe Moretz is in it. She's like, who's that? And I, I said, you know who Chloe Moretz is? She goes, no. Like, like Mi- she turned, she turned no. into Mickey from Rocky all of a sudden. I did. You know I don't know who that is. You can't remake Carrie, goddammit. It's I'm, a phenomenal movie. I'm Here's okay. part of the charm. Don't yeah. remake something that isn't broken. Katie Just re-release Sackhoff. it on the goddamn theater. Is it when Katie shows up, she is Katie Sackhoff. Then she has a couple of Bud Lights. She turns into Robert Shaw from Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> it is. That is the first movie I ever remember seeing. It's the so truth. It makes okay. Sense. All right, Talking let's... about movies you can't remake. That's right. All right. Hey, we're we're in Schmoville here. Who do who do we got? Uh, hey, it's Matt. Hey, Matt. What's up, man? What's going on? Uh, well, actually, I did want to call about uh, remakes and reboots. And yeah. I caught you apparently with uh, Evil Dead and Carrie and. First of all, with those, I'm looking forward to uh, Evil Dead, but not to Carrie. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, here, here, Matt. Uh, I just think, um, again, uh, as for Evil Dead, the second one was actually my least favorite, even though it had the epic, you know, hand part. But uh, the first one, 
was just so scary, and this one looks like a, the remake. Well, it does look like it's got a bigger budget and could be cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still looking forward to it. But uh, my question yes, uh, as for uh, the remakes and stuff, there have been so many remakes, especially with horror movies, some good ones like with uh, The Ring, and there have been really crappy ones like The Haunting. And I'm wondering if there has been... A movie that had a bad remake or one that didn't get one that you think uh, deserves one or deserves a better one. Like great, better than the great remake. question. Thank, Thank you. Question. And Thank I'm gonna you. I'm gonna Thank throw so a much. couple other real good horror movie yeah. remakes before yeah. we get into that. Is uh, the thing. From mm. 1982 was a remake of the thing from another. It was, it was the thing from something, okay. and they remade it into the classic 1982, the thing. And maybe an even better one than that was 1986's The Fly. Oh, oh my god, I yeah, love The Fly. Yeah. One of my first, favorite movies first, of all time. Yeah. Jeff Goldblum yeah. grabbed my ass at an event. It made did my it? life. It made really? my life. Look at that. Really did. All and right. I, I let him leave his hand there. I didn't um, even um, care. I, I just, I just grabbed your ass. Yeah. I just grabbed your and ass. Yeah. a young Gina Davis. Not the last time she'd hook up with an insect on camera Hello. because she later acted with Alec Baldwin. Thank Look you. Yeah. Wow. Whoa, That's whoa, what happens whoa. when you act with the Baldwin Still family. throwing in the zingers. That's right. Uh, now, there's a couple things. Now, as far as reboots, I think we should talk. It's because we're rebooting. We talked about Justice League. We should talk about rebooting Superman. We should talk. It's a reboot. Which is happening. It yeah. is a reboot because you're, do, you're telling the origin story again. And if you look at the – if you look at the, have you seen the trailer? The new one? No, no, no. no. All right. Now, I, the, the trailer – for um, the new, uh, it's a darker tone. It's got Nolan uh, producing. Yeah. Now we don't know after hearing that conversation yeah. how how involved he is. Yeah. But uh, but you know you have him. Uh, but you have Zack Snyder now. I'll tell you what. From which looking I, which at this I trailer, love. I love Zack lo- Snyder. Yeah, but I see. I'm not a huge Zack Snyder fan anymore, like I used to be. When I saw 300, I like. He makes things look pretty. His style is cool. I just feel sometimes he's concentrated more on style than he is uh, substance. That's that's my biggest thing with him. I enjoy watching his movies. Josh? You did a great remake with Dawn of the Dead. Great remake. I will say. Then that's great, right. yeah. I, that's a great No, he, he's, this kid, well, he's here for a reason. <laughs> but, uh, move over to my I got to say, <laughs> I hated he's Sucker here, Punch. He's here to get here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like Sucker Punch. I know you do. Um, I don't and, know why. And I love even more, I, I, love love the, I love the Guardians of Gahul, the Owl movie. Yes. Yeah, see, so that, that was the you. one that he had the most story to. But Christian, if you watch the trailer for Man of Steel, then that looks like he's focusing on story. 100%. Yeah. And that and that's that that was the point I was trying to get to, is the fact that it it, it um it, when you watch all of this stuff that he's done, it doesn't look like a Snyder movie because it looks more like It looks like a Terrence Malick movie almost. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Don't look at me. I was trying to distract you because I wanted to ask you a question. Go ahead. As a, a listener. Yes. What do y'all think about Y'all? Man, <laughs> wow, you were in Moldy. Just got off set. Wow. What, 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 what do you guys, what do you, <laughs> guys, go fuck yourself. Right, what do you think about foreign remakes? Because I do, I, uh, I, I, like really, let me in? Like the grudge or like yeah. the, the, I have the, the, girl I have the, the kid in the grudge that lives up store that, from me, but uh, lives upstairs from me, by the way. We're convinced that, like, I'm going to go up there and knock on the door and she go, <laughs> <laughs> the face, like, is your really, new? Is your really new? Christian has moved recently. Is your yeah. place haunted? No, not like yours. You're sure, okay. my place is haunted. Sure. My place is a little haunted because yeah. I, I think that if American audiences actually went and wanted yeah. to see, I mean, I wish that they wanted to see intelligent movies because if they did, so many foreign movies are remade yeah. at, at, with English, like you know what I'm trying to say. English Fuck you. words. I've had, I've had a lot of beers. Um, and they're so much worse. Yeah. Like, if you would just go see the original girl with the dragon tattoo or the original yeah. grudge, Here's, you would be like, holy right. shit. Here's why the did problem. I, even watch the um, I don't want to go to the movies to read. That's why. And if they want to make them intelligently, that's but you fine. Have, that's silly. You have Netflix, though. You could, you could, watch, you could watch the original one. I don't would. want to read. I don't want to read, read subtitles. She's talking. Oh, oh, you don't oh, want to read you, subtitles? Well, why, why, no, I, I, no, I want to. Okay, here's the thing with the girl with the dragon tattoo, though. I'm not going to say this about the grudge. Here. But the girl with the dragon tattoo. I didn't even realize there were subtitles. It was so fucking good. And, and, and I get that. that you, get just, sucked yeah. in. you didn't realize you were reading. A movie, reading. Uh, a movie like amazing. The Artist, yeah. you, get, you get so sucked Dude, what about, in the Wait a minute, can I stop you there? Yeah. What, what about The Orphanage? Yeah, The Orphanage oh, is great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm fine doing it. I just like you go in yeah. and you're like, you don't I don't have to. Right, right, um, so we have a caller here. Oh, we had a caller and then we if lost. If I want to see a girl get raped in the ass, I want to see it in English. That's my girl. All right. Okay, so I don't know how to say that except you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? Uh, this is Nolan. Hey, Nolan, you're here with Christian, Mark, and uh, a, a drunk. and Josh. <laughs> How are you? Hi, guys. What's up, man? Um, we're talking about remakes and reboots and stuff like that. Yes, sir. Well, I have, t- I have two ideas to bring up here. One, based on a remake that I was thoroughly surprised by. Uh, 
I really enjoyed the Karate Kid remake with Jackie Chan. Okay. I thought that was very good. Gave Jack and gave one of his better performances in there, I thought. Josh, the intern is shaking his head at you, but go ahead. He is. He's very uh, adamantly shaking his head. Yeah. Well, we're, uh, you're, you're gonna have you're gonna have some people on your side and something, but don't worry, Josh. The intern. What's the uh, what's the other flick you liked? Well, well, I'm just saying that you know there's some good remakes and reboots out there. Yeah. But uh, I gotta say that at this point in Hollywood, you know, there's we might end up having to reboot some classic movies. Like my favorite movie of all time is Back to the Future, and if they ever reboot that, I will be. Depressed out of my mind. Yeah, I, I, I'm let's, scared it's going to happen. They can't. No, listen, thank, you, thank, you, thank you so much. Listen, I, well, we had on we had on uh, John Hurwitz and Hayden Schlossberg, uh, the directors of um, American, American Reunion American, and the Harold and Kumar franchise, and there was a big rumor going around that they were uh, going to direct the remake. To it was and it was complete bullshit. Right. Never it was it was they were they were joking and they said they were joking. That movie's not going to be touched. It's it's not. It shouldn't be. Um, at least not the next. You know. I, yeah, yeah, I think because Hollywood is kind of out of original ideas is a popular thing right. to say. Is that when you take a movie that's so classic, like they would never yeah. remake Top Gun either. But there might be a Top Gun two mm-hmm. where you have the young guy in the first one be the the elder play, like Tom Cruise would be the instructor in the new Top Gun. Right. So maybe if Marty McFly is older, because Tom uh, right. uh, uh, Michael, Michael Fox. Fox and even Christopher Lloyd could still pull off roles in a new Back well, to the Future yeah. thing. I, I wouldn't be necessarily against I, that. I, I'm not either, and I have a point that I want to get back to, but I have a, I have a caller real quick in Schmoville. Who do we got? It's Joe. Hey, Joe. What's up, dude? What do you got, man? What's going on? I just I want to know uh, if you guys heard any news about the uh, the Crow remake. I know they were, they were trying to remake it, and it's on and off with uh, Bradley Cooper and all this stuff, but I personally don't want to see it because I love the Crow so yeah. much, the, the original one, but... I haven't heard any news from it lately. Well, th- thanks a lot, Joe. We actually had on... Um, uh, <laughs> Bai Ling? Well, no, not that. Yes, she's in the original. That's true. Yeah. But, but, was she really in the yeah, original? Yeah, Bai Ling. Yeah. She Bai sang Ling's me a song and everything, Josh. I think, I think Bai Ling might movie. be in the yeah. Expendables thing. She really? was looking at Which me one? when the one she with sang the song. Yeah. Really? Okay, that, there you go. Breaking news. Well, I mean, news. not breaking news. I mean, I think that they're going out to her. That's about it. Okay, never mind. So, well, no, but The Crow... They, um, Oliver Stone's kid, Sean Stone, was on two weeks ago, okay. and he says he's involved with that remake as well. And they said it's still going into, it's still kind of the, his point, And I'm with Joe, by the way. I don't think it should be remade. But the point that he made was that the original Crow story, the, the movie, it could be. It's not just uh, Eric Draven's story in the comics. It's not. It's 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 a different. It's about this crow that takes these different lives that yeah. want revenge. So essentially, you could do that with other stories. It's not as specific as, like, say, Tony Stark as Iron Man. It's Tony Stark. Right. It's not like there's kids all over America that find a DeLorean and go back in time. Right. right. But no, this but could actually. It could. Right. And the, the, the Crow is something that, that I think was left unfinished. And, and, and let's be honest, they, I mean, or I rem- not forget that they actually did another Crow already. Well, like four of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. So they've already they done, done this. Well. They yeah. just haven't done them well. Right. So I think that if they're going to do it well, I think that there's an audience for it. I think yeah. it's a great I story. I think it's an interesting, dark thing, which is selling in theaters right now. And I think that people will watch yeah, it. Yeah, it could happen. And let me, real quick, going back to that Back to the Future thing. Too, and then we'll talk about if we can talk about Karate Kid if we have time. But um, the Back to the Future thing here, I had a conversation with a friend of mine the other day, and I'm very curious to what you guys out in Schmoville think and what you guys here think. You know how they have like those holograms now, like Tupac and Elvis just did a thing with his daughter or whatever, too? That's like today. In like 20 years from now, like I am pretty sure that if they want to make an uh, Indiana Jones movie with young Harrison Ford, they're going to be able to do it. I want and, a job. What, but, but you still have to sign over your image, though, and stuff, oh, too. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, Katie, you'll be just as beautiful in 20 <laughs> so they, years. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. So, like, why? going to freeze in place keep, with the Keep hammering those Bud Lights down on Thursday so night. If you Listen, guys had, smoking, if you guys had, look at the way video games are now. And the video games are still like, you know, like yeah. let's let's say that you had the technology to basically recreate movies and like just the images and you could make a Back to the Future movie part four with a 21 year old Michael J. Fox. Would you do it? No. Why not? Because uh, why not? Because because, because you guys taking, are old school. Because part of what made it amazing was Michael J. Fox's vulnerability and his. This, what if this, they could recreate that? They can't because it, you're uh, taking. No, no, wait, you wait, can't. wait! You're because saying you can't, I get the you actor's can't. point of view. I get you the actor's can't. point of view. No, you it's an artist's can't. point of view. It's saying that like, like you can you can have a, a, a hologram of Tupac, mm-hmm. but you can't you you can recreate Tupac. Like, and what he that looks hologram like, kicked ass. But you can't. But you can't be like like you don't know you what his instincts are going to be. You can you can That's recreate the Mona for. Lisa, but you can't get the spirit in it. But you someone you can't. But wait a minute. But someone who does video games, voices and stuff too, they create image images and emotion and that. And I look, don't give my video games half 
a quarter of the emotion well, that I give my characters. But because if, it's but, not me. There's no emotional connection But if, it was, but if it. that was the job and that was it and that was like, okay, we're going to put – we're going to redo – let's say you got paid millions and millions of dollars to do a, uh, a Battlestar Galactica movie and, and Starbuck was going to be 22 years old. and They, they wouldn't do it. I, I don't believe it. Then she could do it. I but I'm saying, I, I think Michael J. Fox is a specific case, though, because they literally they had Eric Stoltz playing that guy, and Zemeckis and right. Spielberg were like, the, "We got to get Michael yeah. J. Fox." Right. So that's a very specific case study where the actor's personality overtakes everything else in the movie. Now, saying, what about what, Harrison have, Ford? Yeah, like, something like even Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones. You like, may be able to do it. You can't do it because here's the reason why I don't give the the characters in the video games as much yeah. of my emotion yeah. is because I don't relate to the character because I didn't create this character. Somebody else did. I get it. I didn't play the character, so I, I even don't know, if you're I just, revisiting, it, let's say you were someone like like Michael J. Fox that was like, you know, I don't know. It, 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 I don't that, think that's so. a very, it's a if very I had that technology in my hands, the first thing I'd do is go see Van Halen from 1981. <laughs> <laughs> right, I would right. too. All right, hey, you're in Schmoville. Who do we got? It's Romero, guys. How you been? Hey, man, what's hey. up? Long so, time no no talk. What's what do you got? Well, I just wanted to drop a little pipe bomb on you guys, especially since you guys are talking about remakes and reboots. And Hollywood is having this trend of reaching into the past for successful movie ideas instead of giving moviegoers original ideas. And it pisses me off when people don't understand the difference between a remake and a reboot. You know, mm -hmm. remakes are about, you know, when basically Hollywood reaches in to remake a movie from a past era. Exactly. Movies are usually standalone movies. Footloose? Great example. Yep. Crash of the Titans, another one. The new Robocop, another example. Then a reboot is basically when a successful series of movies is started over from the beginning. The new Batman trilogy, great example of that. The new Spider Man movies, another great example. And even another thing that people don't understand is that even a remake could have the option of getting rebooted. The new Friday the thirteenth film that came out a few years ago, there was rumors going around that if that movie was successful in cinemas, it would get a new line of rebooted films. This guy should have some podcast. Wow, yeah, you really, that was that was <laughs> pretty amazing. Hey, well listen, he had you guys Katie wasn't on the show. Romero <laughs> used to call in every week and choose to drop bombs like that. <laughs> and then where the fuck have you been, dude? Uh, well, I just started a new job. Uh, it consumes a lot of my time, so I heard yeah, you guys were getting late life. night shows, which is big ups to you. Oh, I got cut off. Yeah, no, we're, no, we're, you're here. You're still on. You're here. Uh, you're still on. I got cut off. No, you're still okay. on. No, so basically, I, could, I heard you guys had new shows, and I was like, well, I got to call these guys, see how they're doing. So, you know, I thought I'd drop a pipe bomb on you guys. You did, and like you always do. I love do. that you call it a pipe bomb, and I know how to make those because <laughs> I grew up in a small town. Thanks Rom for getting the call, guys. I appreciate it. Hey, Romero, thank you. Thanks, yeah, check, Romero. check out uh, Romero's uh, YouTube channel. It's Romero News on uh, on YouTube. That guy kicks ass. So, yeah, my, all right. my only criticism with that call is that when, in the future, when you call a radio station, don't say I'm going to drop a pipe bomb on you because it may have an evacuation. <laughs> you start looking around. Well, Josh, the intern, would have a brand new job. Um, I just said going through the airport the other day, I've been firing machine guns all day long. Maybe wow. maybe you shouldn't uh, test my hands yeah. with that stuff. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Uh-oh. Um, okay. Yeah. So, all right. We have five. We have about five minutes left. A couple other things we want to talk about. Katie, what's, what's the calendar? What's, what's, the, what's the news? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, Trisha Helfer and I have uh, an Acting Outlaws, which is a company that we started together, a 2013 calendar that's coming out. It's going to be available in the next week on redbubble.com. And I'll tease you with a little photo uh -oh. if you want to talk oh, about boy. something else while I look for it. Fine. Um, um, make sure that and Mark one more time when yeah, you see it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, get to the castle. It's on right there. It now, comes out November thirteenth. Another and place. Start start prepping it on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, go go to Amazon right now under on, under our link on our, when you look at the video right now. There's the Amazon link. If you guys can help out the show, when, anytime you buy anything on Amazon, doesn't cost you anything or anything too. Anything you're buying on Amazon, use that link and it helps out the show. And you can buy Mark's CD once it comes out. That's right. And uh, ro big ups to Robert Sumlin again, who did the yeah. cover art for my uh, thing. Yeah. That looks like me. Super Follow Mario. Robert Sumlin on Twitter too, and let him know that the, you, you've seen his art. It's uh, it's at Sumbl Bob S U M B L E B O B. Follow Robert at uh, Twitter. He deserves it. He, the guy is. Uh, he, he was wearing the shirt that Katie was wearing before. He designed the shirt that Katie yeah. was wearing before. Any, any, uh, yeah, everything else. I, have, I have December. Yeah, what do you got? I'm let's see. Ready to okay, show let's December. see December. This right. is December. All right. Oh my God! Can you even see it? That's December. Well, I want to see it. Merry Christmas. Hi. Yeah. I can't see it. Hi guys. <laughs> I'll get there you go. I got arrested. <laughs> Can, can, That's yeah. December. Kenny's go giving, get Kenny, your calendars. Pi, pi, Redbubble. Kenny, 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 Christian's not allowed to see that. Or you can go to actingoutlaws.org, which is Trisha Helfer's and my websites, uh, any one of our websites, and pick it up. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. That's December. And that's the one where we actually probably have the most clothes on. So. All right. You just sold about 
You yeah. sold a lot of those. Okay. <laughs> Go um, for it. All right. So all right, we have a couple things that Kenny, our producer, is shoving in my face. So I got to talk about here. Next week is going to be a fun podcast. Um, now, he- here's some news. Mark Ellis going back on the road to promote his CD. I'll uh, be in Seattle, so I'm going right. to do some Twilight investigation oh, on those yeah. vampires and werewolves. But yeah. Katie Sackoff will be with me, and we're going to have Tiffany Smith back. So it's going to be what a fun show. What a lucky show for me. You, su- you devil, That's you. That's damn right. Uh, so I'm going to be in a babe sandwich. I am t- on this side and this side. I'm excited. All right. Your, we should bring your daughter in. Not next week. Next, uh, the following week. Um, hey, we so, all know I'm the cute one on this show. I don't want to be replaced. Uh, now, next week we're also we're going to when when Katie and uh, and Tiffany are with me, we're going to be talking about video game movies, and we're going to be having our guest Matthew Mercer, who did the voices from Tiger Cats and uh, Tiger Cats, Thundercats, isn't it Thundercats? It's Thundercats. What the yeah. fuck is ti- you wrote Tiger Cats? Tiger from Thundercats. You wrote ti- you wrote Tiger Cats. I was like, I even know what that is. Right. Dude. So you, can you admit that you were wrong there? I was wrong. All right, Tiger Cats. What the hell is Tiger Cats? Thunder- and, then, and he also awesome. did a voice for Res- Resident Evil 6, so make sure you check that out. That's huge. Um, yeah, so we, that, that's really cool. And um, yeah, and just make sure, guys, one of the things, iTunes. Go to iTunes and make sure that you go to Schmoes No Movies podcast and rate it up, do all that stuff. Write a comment. Yeah, all that all that stuff. And share it. We're trying to get the word out of And one last thing, Olivia Munn is going to get Schmovilled. Make sure you tweet her. we got to get her on the show. Speaking of RoboCop, I think she does him. Really? Look, look at that. Wow. All right. And you know what? Tweet Gina Carrado, too. Too. Why not? Let's do two of them. Let's tweet Gina. I'll tweet her tweet right Gina. now. You tweet Gina also. Yay. Everybody tweet Gina and Olivia Munn. Peace out, guys. A lot of fun. Schmoes No Movie Podcast for myself, Katie Sackoff, Mark Ellis, Ken Napsock, Josh the Intern. It's been the Schmoes No Pod- Podcast. Peace out, mother F's. Bye.